15 here, 20 to 14 back in 1971. And in 1976, on a dramatic rally by the then quarterback James Harris, the Los Angeles Rams came from behind to beat the Miami Dolphins at the Orange Bowl in Miami. So the Rams have won the toss here and we're about set to go as you look at Don Shula and Ray Malavese on the other end, Bob. Two coaches apparently with their teams going in opposite directions. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams very, very successful, bringing up uh, a lot of young guys and uh, they've got some experience. Miami Dolphins, on the other hand, they're going to have some changes in the starting lineup. One of them, Tony Nathan, will start at running back in place of Delvin Williams. Somewhat of a surprise for people in the Miami area, but Tony Nathan has been their most productive all-around back. Don Shula giving him a chance to show his wares at running back for the Dolphins. Drew Hill is in single safety, number 87. Hill had a 98-yard return of a kickoff for a touchdown. In fact, he opened the Rams' season that way against the Detroit Lions. Uva Von Schaumann set to go, and we're glad to have you with us. It's Drew Hill at the two-yard line. To the 15. Gets outside at the 20 and finally knocked out of bounds just shy of the 25-yard line. A return of 22 yards by Drew Hill, and the Los Angeles Rams go to work from their own 24-yard line. As I mentioned during our pregame report, there's the starting backfield. Big news for Rams fans. Wendell Tyler, who saw his first action of the year last week against New Orleans, will try to go longer today. They have five outstanding receivers. Denard and Waddy get the start. Victor Hicks is a tight end. A tremendous offensive line. I'm sure Bob will have a great deal more to say about them as the day progresses. France and Slater got to be two of the best offensive tackles in the league. And Rich Saul is their leader of the center. So from the 24-yard line, we go to work. Cullen Bryant, 32. But it's Wendell Tyler who gets the ball. Trying to swing outside, and it's dropped for a two-yard loss. A swarming defense led by Kim Bocamper, number 58, made the stop. And you look at that Los Angeles Rams defense, three down linemen, Vern Dan Herter, Bob Baumauer, and Doug Betters. And their linebackers with Bo Camper. Phil, uh, Ralph Ortega gets the start today ahead of Rusty Chambers, A.J. Dewey, and Larry Gordon. And their secondary young but very effective this year. Don McNeil, the number one choice out of Alabama, with Small, Besselou, and Blackwood. So it's second down 12, a loss of two by Wendell Tyler. Tyler gets the quick pitch. Breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Still on his feet, reaches a 28. Larry Gordon, a gain of six. It'll be third down and about six to go. Tyler, of course, was a young man who in the offseason had a had a car accident, had a dislocated hip. Last week, he carried the ball just two times. He was a 1,000-yard gainer for the Los, Ange Los Angeles Rams last year, and they're six and three so far this season without Willie Tyler, or Wendell Tyler, trying to bring him along slow, make sure he's totally healthy. Here's third down six. There's under a minute to go at Tampa Bay where Pittsburgh leaves the Buccaneers 24-21, but Tampa's got the ball. We'll keep you abreast of that one as well as the Atlanta game. I know LA fans want to follow that. Paragamo completes to Cullen Bryant. First down as he reaches the 35-yard line. He's brought down by strong safety Don Besselou. Now in his second year out of Georgia Tech, but it's good enough for the first down seven yards. Sam, I was going to mention, too, that because these two teams play each other so infrequently, Miami's defense may cause the Los Angeles Rams some problems. They'll put A.J. Dewey down in the line and he'll blitz. He'll blitz. They'll put Kim Bocamper down the line and he'll blitz. At times, it's difficult for the offensive line of the Los Angeles Rams to determine exactly who their man is. We'll see if that happens, but that's the first first down of the ball game for the Rams. This is an offense that is average. 48 points a game in their three appearances, their last three appearances here at Anaheim Stadium. Ferragamo has all day, wants it all, throws it downfield and incomplete. His intended receiver, number 80, Billy Waddy. But he threw that one out of bounds. Besselou and McNeil had the double coverage on Billy Waddy. Ferragamo coming off a five-touchdown pass performance against the New Orleans Saints last week. And a young man who certainly has created a controversy, to say the least, here in L.A. He's got his fans and his detractors over a contract dispute, Bob. And there's his coach, his head coach, Ray Malavese. He is a young man on a roll, Sam. You've heard momentum talked about in professional football very often. Well, it happens individually to players, and Vince Ferragamo has got momentum on his side. He has a second down at 10 with Preston Denard, 88, and Billy Waddy as receivers, but he gives to Tyler to the 40 and the 42-yard line. A quick draw to Wendell Tyler, and Blackwood made the stop, a gain of seven. It'll be second and three. Let's quickly switch now to Bryant Gumbel at NFL 80, Studio 6A in New York.
Thank you, Sam Nover. Down in Florida, the Bucks are hanging tough against the Steelers. Fourth and long, Doug Williams completes one to Jimmy Giles. Play good for 30 yards with 53 seconds left. Tampa Bay's down 24-21. Let's go back to Anaheim. Sam Nover and Bob Trumpy. Okay, Bryant, thanks very much. It's third down and three. Cullen Bryant, the first down and more as he reaches the 47-yard line. A misdirection play in which Cullen Bryant got the first down, stopped by A.J. Dewey and Ralph Ortega, but not before Bryant got the first. Sam, in setting up the football game, we talked a great deal about the offensive problems of the Miami Dolphins. Their defense has been very, very good this year, but they are up against a very gifted offense. Uh, the offense is averaging about 362 yards a game. The Dolphin defense allowing about 338 and only 125 yards rushing, which is second in the NFL. So from the 47-yard line, Ferragamo goes to work again with first and ten. Same setbacks. Pass protection. Throws it to the sideline. High in the air. Billy Waddy could not come down with the football. In the neighborhood of the Miami 40-yard line, Bo Camper and McNeil had the coverage again, but Ferragamo overthrew his intended receiver. Yes, he did. He did overthrow it somewhat, but he gets good protection from that offensive line of the Los Angeles Rams. Obviously, good coverage down the field. And this is a tough one to throw and a tough one to catch. It, he is open. And you'll see Doug France, one of the good offensive linemen there is in the NFL. Betters, a pass rusher on him. Betters has been a good pass rusher. Good pressure by Miami. They'll be around Ferragamo all day. Betters' excellent play forced the Miami Dolphins to find another spot for A.J. Dewey. And he's playing inside linebacker. Second down to 10. It's Tyler. Takes it outside. 50 to the 48-yard line of Miami. And there to make the stop was Ernest Rowe, number 55. And also Don McNeil, who's just been a tremendous player out of Alabama, number one draft choice of that gentleman, Don Shula. And it brings around yet another third down situation now for the Los Angeles Rams. Third down and six, and they're at the Miami 49. Sam, this is the first year I've seen the Miami Dolphins without a real running game. And I do think this franchise is totally set up to uh, be a ball control type of offense. And without that running game, they have to struggle, and they are. Only one setback. It's Cullen Bryant. They slot Wendell Tyler to the left. Denard now in motion. Just coming into your picture. Ferragamo. Denard. Pitch, and he throws it to Bryant. But a great defensive play by Ernest Rohn. Who had the play smelled out and dropped him for a loss back at the 46-yard line. So a loss of five and the Rams will have to give it up. And Frank Corral, who does both the place kicking and the punting here in Los Angeles. Will kick for the first time, obviously, in this football game. 10.08 to go, so the Rams hold the ball for nearly five minutes, Bob, and have nothing to show for it. Corral back at his 30-yard line. A couple of first downs, though. That's not bad. He is number four in the NFC in punting, averaging 41-4, and he'll be punting to Tony Nathan. Whoa. And a short man takes it at the 24-yard line. Looks like he kicked that one with his eyes closed, Sam. It was Don Besselou, number 46, only a 30-yard punt by Corral. So the Dolphins get fairly good field position at their 24-and-a-half-yard line. And they'll go on offense for the first time today with David Woodley. Tony Nathan replacing Delvin Williams today. Nothing wrong with Delvin. Don Shula wants to give Nathan a chance with Robisky, the Oakland cast-off. And Duriel Harris slated to start. Will not. Cephalo starts ahead of Duriel Harris because of a hamstring injury. Matt Moore in the tight end is Ronnie Lee replacing Bruce Hardy. number of changes here for Miami. He's got a man at the 31-yard line. And it'll be gain of six. Jack Reynolds makes the stop on the receiver, Tony Nathan, out of the backfield. And continuing with our offensive set of Miami. And that's what we previewed in the uh, pregame show. John Geisler, Kuchenberg, the veteran, along with Newman. Denner, the center, and Loxo, the right tackle. It is second down and three. Seven yards on the completed pass. Split slightly to the right and Jimmy Cephalo wide to the left. And again, it's Nathan in motion. The handoff is to the remaining back, Terry Robisky, and he's dropped behind the line of scrimmage by Larry Brooks, number 90, and Cody Jones, 76. Loss of a couple of yards, and while speaking of that uh, defensive line, there are three of them. <laughs> Young blood, Cody Jones, Larry Brooks, and the right defensive end is Fred Dreyer. The linebackers, Young blood, Reynolds, and Andrews. 
And the defensive backs may be the best defensive secondary in the National Football League, Bob. Thomas and Perry and Cromwell is probably their best all-around athlete. Those four gentlemen right there have returned four interceptions for touchdowns this year over. Third down and six. Woodley has time, throws in a little high, but a great catch out in the sideline by Joe Rose, the rookie out of California. And that will be a Miami first down, 11 yards on the completed pass from Woodley to Rose. And as we set this game up in the pregame show, the young kids are going to play today. And this is one of the things in Miami that people are a little upset about, that the Miami Dolphins, there's a flag on the field, but the Miami Dolphins are going with the short stuff, not really throwing it down the field that much. It's going to be against Miami, Sam. They're going to bring it back. It's going to be third down and a bunch, about 11. Here's our referee, Dick Jorgensen. Illegal formation, offense, only six men on the line of scrimmage. Third down. That's a mistake of inexperience. That's exactly what they're expecting out of a lot of these young guys. So it'll be a third down and 10 yards to go. Don Shuley is irate. We welcome those of you who have been watching the Pittsburgh-Tampa game. The Steelers beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 24-21. Sam Nover and Bob Trumpy, we are in Anaheim, California. The Los Angeles Rams and Miami Dolphins, they are scoreless in the first quarter. And what you're looking at is an irate Don Shula. He is upset because the Miami Dolphins had just picked up a first down and a pass from David Woodley to Joe Rose. It was called back because of an illegal set. They did not have seven men on the line of scrimmage, apparently, Bob. Evidently, Don Shula is convincing that maybe their call is wrong because the officials are talking it over, trying to determine exactly who was or who was not on the line of scrimmage. They did have a tight end that went from one side of the formation to the other side of the formation, and I think that's what Don Shula is telling them. This gentleman knows a great deal about football, not just the strategy of the game, but also the rules and regulations. How many coaches in the NFL have you ever heard of? trying to pull off an onside punt. <laughs> well, they did it about seven weeks ago against the Cincinnati Bengals. Well, here's the referee Jorgensen again. He's made one announcement. Here he comes for an encore. We have new information. There were seven men on the line of scrimmage. There is no foul. There was enough for a first down. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, has to be one of the most unprecedented things you have seen. Here is the formation. You count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a man who is slotted a little left. Bob. That is the tight end, yes. You can see the five down linemen and the tight end out on the left and the wide receiver on the right side. And it was a legal formation. I commend Dick Jorgensen for correcting himself. Absolutely. They ate the flag and have given Miami the first down that they achieved on the pass from Woodley to Rose at the 40-yard line. Terry Robisky for maybe a yard. Switch now quickly to Bryant Gumbel in New York. NFL 80 will get an update for you on the Pittsburgh victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Bryant? Thank you, Sam. In Florida, the Steelers have beaten the Bucs 24-21. This was the Bucs' last offensive play. Doug Williams underthrows his receiver. Unfortunately, Williams thought it was first down when he threw that ball. Instead, it was actually fourth down. The ball turned over to the Steelers, and they gained a three-point win. Sam? Okay, thank you very much. It's second down. Woodley chased out of the pocket. Throws it down to Tony Nath, and he makes the catch at the 43-yard line. Loses the football. Lateral it. He did. He threw it out there to Bruce Hardy, and they got some extra yardage out of it. He was in the grasp of number uh, 41, Jeff Delaney. Seven yards on the play. And a heads-up play by Tony Nath. It was, too. and I thought he had coughed it up, Bob. He went in motion, and I do see that... That the Los Angeles Rams are playing what they call an over defense and blitzing an extra linebacker, but a fine catch by Nathan. And watch what happens here. He has the presence of mind to lateral it to Bruce Hardy. He picks up about another four yards. Now it's third down and less than a yard. So they're at the 49-yard line of the Dolphins. Woodley has looked like anything but a rookie in this series. And he takes a quarterback sneak and gets the first down as he dives to the Rams' 49-yard line. So David Woodley does it on his own, getting the Miami Dolphins a first down at the Rams' 49. The Rams took the opening kickoff, for those of you who joined us late, held the ball for nearly five minutes, drove it to about the 45-yard line of Miami, could not go any farther, and then a punt by Frank Corral that was shanked only 30 yards. The Dolphins in fairly good field position, and they have driven it from their own 24. From the 
from the 49-yard line. Matt Moore, 89. Jimmy Cephalo, 81, the wide receivers. Nathan and Robisky behind Woodley. And he throws it out in the flat. It's caught by Nathan. And they say he was down. He was touched in his knee touched at the 43-yard line. George Andrews had the cover. Six yards on the completed pass. Let's check some other scores around the National Football League. We told you about that final. The Steelers held on to win it. They are in the fourth quarter. Danny White is thrown for one touchdown. Phil Sims for two. The Giants are alive and well, giving the Cowboys all they can handle today. It is now final. The Bears have beaten Washington 35-21. Chicago scored 35 first-half points. Second down and four. Nathan in motion again. Dolphins showing a lot of motion today. Woodley. of Jack Youngblood here. You'll see coming from the left-hand side of your screen, thinks about going outside, thinks better about it, and he's a big, strong kid. Make no mistake about it. 6'2", about 190 pounds, and it didn't take him long to learn that there is some security on that turf. They are in the third quarter at St. Louis. The St. Louis Cardinals continue to lead Atlanta 27-13. If the Falcons fall today and the Rams win, Los Angeles has undisputed possession of the first place in the NFC East. At the moment, they've got their hands full. Woodley avoids the rush. Youngblood went down, looking all around for Woodley. Throws it over the middle for Nathan, and it's incomplete. Again, let's go back to New York for another update on the Baltimore-Cleveland game. Here's Bryant Gumbel at NFL 80. Thank you, Sam. At Baltimore's Memorial Stadium, the Colts have moved within eight points. The Browns, Curtis Dickey, doing the honors from five yards out. It's 21-13 as they start the four. Sam? in the NFC East. I apologize for that. Of course, that would be difficult to do unless uh, they really had it scrambled up badly. They are in the NFC West. I'll tell you one thing. They don't want to be in the NFC East. They want to stay in the NFC West. Second down and 10 after the incompleted pass by Woodley at the 31-yard line of Los Angeles. The Dolphins have driven it from their own 24, and Nathan goes in motion. And again, the pressure is on Woodley. Throws it to Nathan. Inside uh -oh. the 30s. Sully, number 37, has just taken the ensuing kickoff, but a flag is down. A return of 20 yards. We apparently have had some audio problems here just as Tony Nathan was going across the goal line. Apparently, my microphone went out, and we apologize for the audio difficulty. Side, kicking team, personal foul, flipping, 52 on the return, penalties offset, re-kick. 
so the Dolphins will have to take it back and do it again after Ivory Sully returned the football to fairly good field position for the L.A. Rams. Well, this crowd is hush Bob, 69,000 strong, and the Dolphins have leaped out in front. And there's no telling what this is going to do to this football team. To this point in the season, the Dolphins have scored just 13 points in the first quarter, and they made it look easy with about the same formation, running several plays against the Los Angeles Rams, and I'm sure Coach Malavasi is somewhat upset that they made it look easy, the Miami Dolphins did. Number 87, Drew Hill, now goes back in single safety at about the five-yard line, and Von Schaumann will have to kick it again. The Dolphins have been looking for a shot in the arm somewhere, and as I said, apparently, when we were having microphone difficulty, David Woodley, in 15 quarters of play, had helped Miami to only 24 points, 14 of them coming in the last two minutes of a loss to the Jets. Here's Hill, far sideline, to the 20. At about the 23, but that's a pretty good place to put Drew Hill if you want to keep him out of trouble. 21 yards on the return, but they pinned him in at the far sidelines, and the Dolphins with great special teams coverage. Here are some other scores. Now in the fourth quarter, Cleveland leading the Baltimore Colts 21-13 that game at Baltimore. The game that L.A. fans are concerned about, St. Louis seems to have it well in hand by 14 over Atlanta. They are midway through the third quarter. Minnesota has always been difficult for Detroit, and the Vikings now can get back in the race in the NFC Central if they can hold that lead. And Green Bay and San Francisco in a 13 tie at the moment. Here it is 7-0 Miami. Cullen Bryant gets the handoff from Ferragamo, turns it up at the 25, still on his feet, like a battering ram to the 35. Don McNeil falls on top of him, 13 yards on the first down carry by Cullen Bryant. Bryant did a great job, but let's give credit to that offensive line of the Los Angeles Rams. In a man-on-man -man blocking, you'll watch one of the guys cut off the pursuit. Cullen Bryant cuts back underneath that one block, and then all he has to deal with are a couple of linebackers <laughs> and a couple of defensive backs, and it. 6-1-236 against a 180-pound defensive back. He's going to win most times. Would you say that's a mismatch? <laughs> yes, it is. From the 35 in the I formation, Wendell Tyler gets the handoff. Picks a little hold to the 40. Okay, quickly, again, bringing you up to date on scores from around the National Football League. There are our first quarters. Cincinnati has drawn first blood uh, up the coast here in Oakland, California. Kansas City leading Seattle 3-0. That's the first quarter score. Buffalo 10-0 over the Jets at Shea Stadium in New York. That's a first quarter score. And New Orleans surprising Philadelphia. Wow. At the Superdome, 7 nothing. They gotta win sometime. Second down and five. And the exchange between Ferragamo and Saul and to about the 45-yard line. And that'll be close to a Los Angeles first down. Let's again go to Bryant Gumbel at NFL 80 in New York for an update. Bryant? Thank you, Sam. At Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, the Browns are closing in on their fifth straight win. Brian Seidt throwing his 18th touchdown pass of the year to Greg Pruitt. It's now 28-13 in the fourth. Back to Anaheim and Sam. Okay, buddy. Thanks very much. 7-0 Dolphins still leading the Rams. Los Angeles with a third down at about a yard. Double tight end situation. Walt Arnold, 84, joins Victor Hicks. And from the eye, they pitch to Tyler. Little hole. Tyler taking some hits today and coming off uh, pretty good, Bob. Yeah, and they've been very, very protective of Wendell Tyler. And you'll see that's now seven rushes for 26 yards for Wendell Tyler. And this guy, as I said, a thousand yard rusher for the Rams last year. And then so far they've won six of nine games. And number 51, Rusty Chambers, missed the tackle here. He slipped a little bit, but that gave him the first down. For those of you who don't know, Tyler suffered a dislocated hip in an automobile during the summer. Made his first appearance of the year last week, carried but two times. Ferragamo wants it all. Here's it out downfield, and it's a little long for Billy Waddy, his intended receiver. And again, Don McNeil had the coverage, and it appeared to be pretty good coverage. Excellent coverage. He made Ferragamo, if it was going to be a completion, it had to be a perfect pass. 
No, Sam, you were talking about Wendell Tyler and his rehabilitation of his injured hip. The biggest thing that they did with Wendell Tyler was put him in a swimming pool, let him swim, let him walk around, keep the weight off his leg. Rather interesting rehabilitation, but it obviously worked. We have a minute and a half left here in the first quarter, and Miami leads 7-0. Uh, I had a great statistic about the Dolphins on the road, and I can't find it, Bob, but it's something like they have been outscored in the first quarter on the road 56-7, to I think, in points, but this is a turnabout today. They have outscored the opposition 7-0. Ferragamo throws it over the middle and it out. Almost intercepted, in fact, by Glenn Blackwood, who appeared to have a better shot than the receiver, Drew Hill. And Sam, that was one of those situations up front where they put A.J. Dewey down on the defensive line of scrimmage. He rushed the passer. You'll see Doug Betters come in number 75 on the left-hand side of your picture and just r rush Ferragamo ever so slightly right there. And that makes him throw it in a hurry. He did, had no, no time to look at an alternate receiver, and Blackwood almost picked it off. Third down and 10. Billy Waddy and Preston Denard, the wide receivers, as you look at Pat Hayden on the bench and Elvis Peacock in the backfield. Ferragamo again throws this one downfield and it is incomplete. Just out of the reach of Drew Hill, number 87. So the Rams have tried the bomb today just to fail to connect on a couple of them. Ferragamo is just two of six for nine yards total so far. Well, we've got a long way to go. He had 468 yards last week and five touchdowns. I do imagine that he'll catch fire here in a little bit. So Frank Corral punting for the second time today and hoping to do considerably better than his first uh, outing, which was only 30 yards. Tony Nathan in single safety. And Nathan has been a spark plug thus far, hasn't he? Yes, he, he has. He got the start today ahead of Delvin Williams, and he has done the job, including the 31-yard touchdown catch from David Woodley. This is his first start, too, as a running back. Another bad punt. Oh, terrible punt by Corral at the 29-yard line. It's Besselu again who makes a fair catch, but a flag is down. Again, a 30-yard punt by Frank Corral and the Boo Birds are out here in Anaheim along with the humidity might I add that penalty is against the Rams and I would have to think the Dolphins would decline it and take the field position Frank cannot be particularly pleased with it penalty is declined first off illegal receiver downfield Jeff Delaney number 41 that's not like Frank Farrell he is averaging 41.4 yards per kick watch this after he kicks it yes I can't explain why he would punt the ball that badly twice in a row on, on almost the same spot. Well, it's 76 degrees out here in Southern California. We'll be back in a moment. Sam Nover and Bob Trumpy in Anaheim, the Los Angeles Rams trailing the Miami Dolphins 7-0, and the Dolphins' second possession of the day will start from their 28-yard line. And the fans in the stands are very, very quiet. reacting, I believe, to that Atlanta-St. Louis score, and the Cardinals continue to lead 27-13 over the Atlanta Falcons. You know who Los Angeles is rooting for, St. Louis. To the 32-yard line, the ball carrier Tony Nathan leaping over a few tacklers for about a gain of three. George Andrews making the stop, and talking about Andrews, their number one draft choice last year out of Nebraska reminds me that Bob Brzezinski, as many of you out here in L.A. know no all about it. No huddle play. No huddle play. Yes, it is. Very quick one. We'll talk more about Brzezinski in a moment. Here's a second down for David Woodley. As a man, it deflected off his hands. It was Nathan up around the 37-yard line. And it stops the clock with 49 seconds to go in the first quarter. Andrews replaces Bob Brzezinski, who left the team in midweek over a contract dispute. Second time he's walked out. And there are some unhappy people in the Los Angeles front office. I think defensive coordinator Bud Carson was quoted as saying he will not play for the Los Angeles Rams again. Don Shula doesn't care about Bob Brzezinski. He sure does. He's got his own word. Carl Ecker, number 55. And Jeff Delaney, 41, in a third down and six situation. Come into the defensive uh, set for the Rams. They can't get to Woodley. And he got rid of that one and almost completed the pass to Joe Rose. The Buffalo Bills are beating the New York Jets at Shea Stadium, New York. For more, let's go back to Bryant Gumbel at NFL 80. Thank you, Sam. In the rain at Shea, the Bills aren't only beating the Jets, they're embarrassing them. Touchdown pass, Joe Ferguson to Mark Bramer. Second time that combination has worked. It's 17-0 as they start the second. Sam? 
From the 32-yard line, it is now fourth down for Miami. Leroy Irvin, number 47 in single safety, awaiting the punt of number four, George Roberts. He is number three in the AFC, averaging nearly 43 yards a pop. And as you can plainly see, he's a left-footed kicker, and this is a dandy. Fair catch by Irvin back at the 17-yard line. So the Los Angeles Rams, after a 49-yard punt by George Roberts, have the football back again and have not been able to generate any offense. And isn't it funny, we set this game up as a no-offense Miami Dolphins. Yeah, Sam, you know, that last uh, possession by the Miami Dolphins, rather interesting. Don Shula, whoa, you're kidding. Mm. New York Giants beat the Dallas Cowboys 38-35. to Oh, <laughs> Ray Perkins and Phil Simms uh, will now run for office and probably win. <laughs> Only if they're conservative Republicans. <laughs> Elvis Peacock in the backfield of the L.A. Rams. So Wendell Tyler got one quarter of action. Of course, so whether he returns or not remains to be seen. But it's Peacock and Cullen Bryant. Ferragamo throws it out in the flat. Peacock dancing around looking for daylight. Picks up maybe a yard or two and a good defensive play by Kim Camper. That's a great de defensive play by Camper. Had a guard right in front of him. Just reached right over that offensive guard after first stuffing him, putting him on the ground, and made the tackle. I'll tell you, that kid's rookie year, I had to play against him, and he is absolutely unblockable. He has very, very long arms. You can't get to his body. And the Los Angeles Rams are doing very little here so far in this first quarter. We'll give him a gain of uh, maybe a yard. It's second down and nine. It's Ferragamo trying to go back to work again. Well, he'll have to wait for a few minutes in a commercial break here because we have come to the end of the first quarter. At the Anaheim Stadium, it's the Dolphins seven, the Rams nothing. Sam, an interesting picture here. You see Ray Malavese, Vince Ferragamo, and Bob Lee, the backup quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams, Pat Hayden, over getting a drink. Normally when the starting quarterback comes to the sideline, the other two quarterbacks help him out. But because of this soap opera in Los Angeles, who's the best and who's the starter, <laughs> Pat Hayden has removed himself from the scene. It's a soap opera, is it? Second down and nine. Peacock to the 25, reaches the 29-yard line, and very close to an L.A. first down. Ralph Ortega, starting today ahead of Rusty Chambers, made the stop. And the time of possession indicates uh, not quite 2-1, to one, but the Dolphins had much the better of the play in the first quarter. Nine yards on the carry by Elvis Peacock and a Los Angeles Rams first down. Already we uh, figured that the Los Angeles Rams would throw the ball almost at will, but they've had very little success completing passes, but an awful lot of success running the football on this 34 defense. Very little success. Ferragamo's 3 out of 8 for 3 yards in the fish. again to Bryant. And he gets a couple as he crosses the 30 to about the 31-yard line. Stopped by a nose tackle Bob Baumauer in his fourth year out of Alabama. And the Miami Dolphins defense certainly cannot be faulted for their 4-5 and five record with perhaps one exception. They got blown out by New England 34 to nothing. But in most of the games this year, the Miami Dolphin defense has really had to keep them in the game. And they have done the job. They have limited their opposition to 14-17 points on every occasion but two. Here's a second down and eight. And Ferragamo play action. Oh, and he's looking right into the face of A.J. Dewey. As he turned on the play action and rolled to his left, Dewey was there waiting for him. Okay, A.J. Dewey is a starting inside linebacker. That's an 11-yard loss, but at that time, and I told you this at the start of the game, because these two teams don't play each other very often, A.J. Dewey that time came uh, from the defensive end spot, and he stayed at home. It was a blitz.
Malavese. I don't know. It isn't important whether I agree or not. Ray Malavese certainly would agree with you, I'm sure. From the 15-yard line, three wide receivers, Denard, Waddy, and Drew Hill. Ferragamo has time. Steps up in the pocket to Waddy over the middle, juggled it, caught it at the 30-yard line. He'll be considerably short of the first down. Ernest Grohn, the five-year veteran out of Henderson State in Arkansas, made the stop, but they'll have to kick it again. He was lucky. That was very, very close to an interception. Larry Gordon was right there. Waddy made an excellent catch, and Mr. Ferragamo is certainly not on track so far in this football game. That makes him now for the afternoon four out of nine for 17 yards total. Third punt of the day for Frank Corral. He has had, he has stuck on 30. His first punt for 30 yards, his second for the same. Tony Nathan in single safety. There is no up back in this particular set. Corral, a little better, but it's a line drive punt, and if Nathan can get his hands on it, which he can't, he could have returned it, but it's out of bounds. At about the 31-yard line, depends on where they spot it. 39 yards on the punt by Corral, and again, Frank having some problems today, but that young man has yet to put any points on the board, coming off five touchdowns last week against New Orleans. At Shea Stadium, it's pouring rain. It's the Jets who are getting all wet. Kevin Long losing the handle here. Bills recovered. They've got the ball and a 17-0 lead. Let's go back to Anaheim and Sam Nofer. So the troubles for Walt Michaels obviously continue. And the troubles here in Los Angeles. Well, we mentioned before that they don't talk. They were great friends prior to the injuries to Pat Hayden. But let's be fair. There you see Pat Hayden trying to do the best he possibly can in a backup role to Vince Ferragamo. He is a team player, Pat Hayden, a Rhodes Scholar, and uh, not a selfish person. Nathan in motion, first down to 10 Miami at their own 31-yard line. Woodley throwing on first down. Has it deflected and intercepted and dropped by the Rams? No, they say no catch. Pat Thomas had the deflection, lost it, and the official rules it was no interception. That was slightly overthrown to Nat Moore by David Woodley, and he is upset with himself. Nat Moore has been a very, very consistent receiver. 27 catches so far this year. You'll see it slightly overthrown. And that's one of the problems of a young, of a young quarterback like that. He hasn't established the timing between himself and the receiver. And the interesting thing about Woodley is he's throwing on first down in every series. I would, too. They can't run it. Second down to 10, Delvin Williams in the backfield. And they draw it to Delvin. Big hole, 40, Wrong. 45. This is a very, very anemic offense. Well, you know, the Dolphins have the best record of any AFC team against the NFC. They are 27-5 historically. Don Shula has been able to stomp all over teams from this conference. And at the moment, they lead 7-0 and are looking for seven more. They're definitely doing it again. Tony Nathan giving Delvin Williams a rest after scampering 64 yards. First and goal. Play action. Woodley has a man. Great tackle, too. Excellent tackle to keep him out of the end zone. Isn't that amazing? This guy, that guy right there, Don Shula, has absolutely come up with more things to win a football game. Look at this. Williams, a couple of years ago, years ago in 78, 1,258 yards. Last year, 703. So far this year, just a 3.0 average. And they tried Tony Nathan. He's a lot better receiver. What does Delvin Williams do? Carry the ball one time for 64 yards. Now, this is Miami weather, 87% humidity accustomed to it here in Anaheim, but the Dolphins are enjoying it very much. Thank you. A dive, and I'm waiting for an official signal. I don't believe he made it. It was Terry Robisky, and they say he did not. He stopped just shy of the goal line as Robisky tried to dive it into the end zone. So it's third down, and goal to goal for Miami. And this is where the Miami Dolphins have had their problems. They've been able to drive the ball down the field uh, from the 20-yard line in. They've experienced a great deal of trouble. This is a two-down area. You're ahead seven to nothing against the Los Angeles Rams. You're four and five on the season. Get it in the end zone. Don't kick a field goal. Try to establish momentum for your team. Right, Don? Well, we'll see. Just inches shy of the goal line. There's the surge. The handoff flag is down. Nathan spins into the end zone. Oh, but lots of penalty goodness. markers, and it could be against the right side of the Miami offensive line. It's on the left side of the Miami offensive line. You are right, Sam. Watch what happens. There's 
Dennard to center. No, it's the right side. The, yeah, the left oh, no, you guard. Right. I think somebody on the other side of Dennard moved even before that. And I'll tell you what, that's the, the one with the most experience on an offensive line, Bob Kuchenberg. Here's Dick Jorgensen. We can stop guessing and give you the official word right here. Ball start on the left guard. Offense. Thank you, Mr. Trump. My down. apologies. I thought I saw a movement to the right of Dennard. And we've been talking about the inexperience of the, of the offensive line. Cooch has played every spot on that offensive line. Have been an all-pro at, I think, all of them except center. And he's the one that destroys the scoring opportunity. Third down and six. A different set. Now for Miami. Quarterback draw. Woodley looking to his left. The rush is on. He's got room to try to run. He's Ten, five, it. touchdown, David Woodley. Six-yard scramble by David Woodley, but it was much more than that because they had him all the way back in the 20. Fantastic. Fantastic if you're a Miami Dolphins fan. Watch this. There is no middle linebacker there. That's what I thought they'd run a quarterback draw. But he's obviously looking out the net more. Once again, that's a rookie mistake for him to get outside of that, that pass protection that he has. But he gets in the end zone. That's why he's playing, and I'm talking. That's 69 yards on five plays and into the end zone. And Uva Von Schaumann will attempt to make it 14 to nothing. Don Strock, the backup quarterback, will hold. It would be an understatement to say the fans here in Anaheim are shocked. The placement and the kick is perfect. And so we have 11 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And it's the Miami Dolphins who are enjoying it thus far. 14-0 over the Rams. We'll be right back. Well, if you want an interesting statistic on this football game, it is the most points the Los Angeles Rams have been behind this season since their opening loss to Detroit. They are down 14 at home to the Miami Dolphins. And it's Drew Hill to the 25. Breaks it 30. Oh, and he was one man away from perhaps popping out. But he got it back to the 30-yard line. 16 yards on the kickoff return by Drew Hill. And he was stopped by Bill Barnett, the rookie out of Nebraska. Well, we talked at the beginning of the show that Don Shula said we aren't mathematically eliminated from anything. He wanted to look at his young people today, and he's getting a lot more performance than perhaps he bargained for, because if they can win this, they're back to 500, and perhaps still very much in the race in the AFC East. And there's one thing I think we've become accustomed to in watching Don Shula. You see their record right there. He never gives up. He never gives up, and that's one of the real characteristics of the, law of the Miami Dolphins. Well, he'll need some help from Houston beating New England. There's flags down again as Baumauer knocks Rich Saul on his rear end and leaps over the line. Everybody, everybody pointing fingers to the other side. You can understand why the Rams fans are, at this point in the game, very quiet. 73 yards total offense in about a quarter and a half. Watch Rich Saul. Watch his fingers. Straightened up. It's illegal once you get your hands on the football. Well, as if things aren't bad enough for L.A. fans at the moment, I've got some more bad news for you. A score from out of town, and we'll give it to you right after this play. 11.03 to go second quarter. The Rams down 14-0, starting now from their 25. It's first and 15. Ferragamo throws it out here. He's got a man wide open. Peacock to the 35. Trying to spin away and gets up to about the 38-yard line. A couple yards shy of the first down. Here's the score. Down earlier by a count of 27 to 13, the Atlanta Falcons have come back on a pass from Barkowski to Wallace Francis and a run by Lynn Kane. They have tied St. Louis 27 all, eight and a half minutes to go, fourth quarter. That game in St. Louis. And if you wonder why it's important, because Atlanta and L.A. are tied for first place in the NFC West. 13 yards on the completed pass, second down and two. Time. Over the middle, he's got a man and he dropped the football. Number 81, Victor Hicks. That ball once again thrown behind Victor Hicks. Ferragamo now 5 of 11 for 28 yards. All right, let me pose a question to you. You know what happened here in, against New Orleans last week with a big lead of 38-14. They pulled Ferragamo and let Hayden play. Would Malavese go the other way? Down 14-0. When did he start thinking about changing quarterback? No, I don't think that he can do that in this situation. He, Ferragamo has been a hot quarterback. Just because he has a bad first half, you can't take him out of the lineup. He got the first down to Peacock and Moore. Out of bounds up near midfield. A good catch by Elvis Peacock as he plucked that one right off his hip. 
13 yards, Ferragamo to Elvis Pica. The thing that Ferragamo has to do is be patient as a quarterback. Uh, not, you got to keep your eyes off the scoreboard. And we must also say, I do believe, that the Miami Dolphins are doing an excellent job of defending the Los Angeles Rams down the field. The majority of their pass completions have been out to the sideline. So give credit where credit is due. The defensive coordinator of the Miami Dolphins done a great job. Bill Archsparker, that would be, with 10.09 left here in the second quarter. Ferragamo came into this game with a completion percentage of 63. Throws again out in the flat. Peacock juggles it and holds on. Larry Gordon buries him at the 47-yard line. But a pickup of about four yards on the completed pass. And Ferragamo taking just what the Miami Dolphins are giving him. It'll be second down and six, and the clock continues to run. Look at this. The Minnesota Vikings have wiped out the Detroit Lions. The Lions started the season undefeated, won five straight, and now the Vikings have creeped back within one game of first place in the NFC Central. What happened to uh, Billy Sims and that song that they played up there? Another one bites the dust? <laughs> That's what happened today. Well, they got a mouthful in Detroit. Willie Miller, 82, and Drew Hill, 87, the outside receiver. They have five dandy receivers here in Los Angeles. On play action, Ferragamo wants it all. He's got a man. It's Drew Hill down the middle, and he overthrew him in the end zone. The Dolphins also had double coverage from Don Besselou and Don McNeil. And we talked about this young secondary between McNeil, Blackwood, Besselou, and Gerald Small. They have but seven years of National Football League experience, and they're going to be around for a long time for uh, Don Shula, you can rest assured. In fact, I think three of the four, this is the first year they've been a starter. McNeil, Blackwood, and Besselou. Gerald Small is the only one with any experience at all. And Besselou only got a chance to play because Tim Foley's hurt. Well, they're doing the job so far on this half. I don't care how many years' experience they've got. Vince Ferragamo overthrew Denard on that one badly. This is the 20th ranking defense in the National Football League, and they have shut out the L.A. Rams through a quarter and a half. Third down and seven for Ferragamo. Oh, and he's sacked from behind. Dewey. Dewey again, his second of the day. He's got five and a half on the year, and he is an aroused football player. 15 yards on the loss. And that vaunted offensive line of the Rams uh, has been a little sieve like. All right, that's the outside linebacker on the other side, Bo Camper. And 77, A.J. Dewey, the inside linebacker. And you see it's confusing the offensive line of the Los Angeles Rams. They're blitzing at times four and five guys from the outside is where the pressure is coming from. A.J. Dewey normally in passing situations uh, vacates his inside linebacking spot and replaces betters on the outside as a defensive end. He's got great quickness. Good punt by Corral. I'd rather be lucky than good. Corral had a very good punt, but he certainly was lucky because it could have gone in the end zone. But instead, watch the bounce. Delaney just, I don't know I don't if he know. touched it or not, but it went out on its own at the one. Well, I know to uh, entice the Los Angeles Rams to move to Anaheim, they gave him just about everything, but that's a little much. I think they spotted the ball closer to the two, as our director Ken Fouch pointed out. I think we caught him in a half-yard uh, mistake there. Nonetheless, Woodley has his rear end in the end zone. And the handoff straight ahead, down at the goal line. Not Gary Robisky, I don't believe it's a safety. Not a safety. Reggie Doss, the third-year man out of Hampton Institute, dropped him right on the goal line. They may allow his forward progress to the half-yard line. I have a feeling, Sam, when they place the ball here, every one of the Miami Dolphins' offensive line will be in the end zone this time. Nothing up the middle. Nothing at all. Robisky with his head down. And he's lucky. He's lucky. He almost lost the ball, didn't he? Second down and 100 yards to go. At the half-yard line, second down and about 11 now for Miami. And everybody's lined up in the end zone. Woodley sneaks it out to the three. Stopped there by 53, Jimmy Youngblood. So it's third down, and you can... I was going to say you can rest assured, but I would, I would think Woodley would just be happy to inch it out a few more yards and kick it out. Got it, Troy. You think? Got to throw it. A slant pass, the net more, something like that. Anything that's a high percentage completion. 
And running back out of the backfield, who came out? Uh, Nat Moore did come out. I think they do have t two tight ends now, but I'd still try to throw it. You don't have enough room to punt the ball there. They've got Joe Rose, number 80, and Bruce Hardy, number 84, as the tight ends. I'd look for the pass, even though that's a run set. It's Robisky and Nathan, the setbacks behind Woodland. And he gives it again, Robisky for a couple to about the six-yard line. The Dolphins will have to give it up. Mike Fanning, 79, made the stop. But on comes the punt team of George Roberts from Miami. So much for my coaching. They're ahead 14 to nothing without me, so they can do what they want. <laughs> Leroy Irvin back in single safety now for the Los Angeles Rams. He is averaging nearly 10 yards a punt return. And among the leaders in the National Football Conference, and the Rams, barring a fumble, should have excellent field position here. They are down 14 nothing, under seven minutes to play in the second quarter. And notwithstanding the New York Giants win over Dallas, this may also be coupled as one of the upsets of the day. But I got a feel that Don Shula did not want to do this for the Los Angeles Rams. Give them good field position, up 14 to nothing, and all of a sudden momentum jump on the side of the Los Angeles Rams. for yourself George Roberts catches the ball here and for some reason he should punt it I believe right there instead he takes an extra step look at them wow I think that's totally on him we're back live Corral kicking deep it's Tony Nathan two yards near Besselu two yards deep in the end zone and he gets it back to about the 15 yard line and maybe just across a return of 19 yards by Don Besselu, number 46. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Heavyweight Marty Monroe on the dangers of boxing on the Sunday show on KNBC Los Angeles. Six minutes and 14 seconds left in the second quarter. The Miami Dolphins lead Los Angeles 14 to 7. Along with Bob Trumpy, this is Sam Nover at Anaheim Stadium. Miami Dolphins go to work now. They have the ball spotted up on the 18-yard line. The Dolphins have worked so hard for their 14 points in the Rams. Haven't produced a lot and got seven. Cephalo number 81, Nat Moore 89, the wide receivers. No hole there for Rubisky. Now the Rams defense has come alive. Larry Brooks number 90 and 79, Mike Fanning. That's a minus four yards on that carry. And Sam, you're right. Do not think that that man wanted to give the Los Angeles Rams quick huddle here, quick play, any momentum at all. From the 15, it's second down. 14 over the middle for Nathan. Oh. One-handed catch at the 30-yard line and a first down. Tony Nathan catches that ball with one hand. 16 yards on the completed pass, and George Andrews made the tackle. All right, Sam, I'll tell you what Don Shula's doing. Apparently, on second long situations, that's when the Los Angeles Rams are coming in with their fifth defensive back and taking that linebacker out. You saw him complaining on the sideline as you watched the end of the catch to the officials, Don Shula was, that those men should not be allowed in the ballgame. That's what he's trying to avoid. Once again, superior coaching. Okay, Delvin Williams now in the backfield replacing Tony Nathan. First down, Miami. And a pretty big one for Woodley. Here's Williams finding a little bit of a daylight, stretches out to about the 35, and again, Larry Brooks, number 90, is the man who made the stop. It'll be a gain of about three, second down at seven. Here's the score, Cleveland clinging to a 
four-point lead over Baltimore. Burt Jones has thrown a couple of touchdown passes, one to Reese McCall, one to Don McCauley, and they're to within a point. But there's only 19 seconds left in the game, and the Browns look like they're going to win their fifth straight, Bob. Second down and seven. Again, the nickel, nickel defense employed by the Rams. Jeff Delaney, number 41, comes into the backfield. Carl Eckert is the linebacker, and George Andrews comes out. Looks like a blitz. Flag down. Woodley. Crossing pattern. He's got his man. Cephalo at the 45. And if the penalty is not against Miami, that'll be good enough for a first down. 11 yards on the completed pass. Oh, uh, procedure by Miami. Once again, that inexperience. That was a fine catch. They had a strong safety blitz there. But oh. they picked it up. Looked like Nolan Cromwell was blitzing. Only the third catch of the year for Cephalo, but it is negated by the penalty. The Cleveland-Baltimore game is now final. The Browns have won it 28-27. to Burt Jones had three touchdown passes. Brian Seif had a pair. And at halftime. Illegal motion, number 64, offense. After the shift, he was not a second set, a second before the snap. <laughs> Spit it second out. Second down. Spit it out. That's Ed Newman, and that's really the quarterback's fault. You can't blame, blame Ed Newman for that. He is supposed to allow, the quarterback is supposed to allow one second for the offensive lineman to get down there. As I started to say at halftime, NFL 80 with Bryant Gumbel. All the scores and highlights from around the National Football League today. It is now second down and 12. Big hole for Nathan. 40, 45, and he almost broke it. And they are finding some gaping holes in the defense of the Los Angeles Rams. 18 yards on the carry by Tony Nathan. And to really appreciate what the Miami Dolphins running game is doing to the Rams today, consider the fact that at Oakland last Sunday, their entire rushing totaled 68 yards. And the Los Angeles Rams are allowing just 115 yards rushing per game. Good trap block by Dennard and by Cooch up the middle. And Nathan has really been almost a one-man show with the exception of Delvin Williams' 64-yard run. Delvin Williams replaces Nathan again. And there's Williams in motion toward us. Under four minutes That's to play, a and the yes, flag sir. is down. Here's Woodley throwing it out in the flat. It's caught by Cephalo. But if it's illegal procedure against Miami, again, Cephalo will lose his second completion. Button. When Tony Nathan went in motion, Robisky also moved over. You cannot have two men in motion at the same time. Another five yards. Well, that's too bad get something going and then make a, a, a dumb mistake like that. And that'll drive Don Shula crazy. He is calling the plays, most of the plays, for David Woodley from the sideline, and he's doing it without the ever-present that you normally see in the NFL uh, game plan in front of him. It's also not the young people we talked about who are making the mistakes for Miami today. Kuchenberg made a fatal mistake earlier in the ball game when they had a second and goal at the one. in the first half already today for the Miami Dolphins. And as Bob just pointed out, the Rams are allowing only 115 a game. And the Dolphins are only averaging 94 a game, Sam. You can flush the uh, stats you know where. The computer. That's right. Fails again. First and 15 in Woodley with plenty of time. Here's it out. He's, He's got a man downfield, and it's oh. ah! Intended receiver was a rookie, Elmer Bailey, out of Minnesota. And I think Woodley just hung it up a little too long had the coverage. Bailey was there. The ball was there. Woodley threw it nicely, but I think it had a little bit too much hang time. Well, that's too bad. This was a good pattern run. You can see him go right by Thomas. Then he looks back in a hurry, and it's over his outside shoulder. That's the toughest catch there is to make in professional football. But just, if he'd have just extended his hands a little bit, and I don't want to be too critical of him. He's running as hard as he possibly can, but nevertheless, an incompletion. Pretty Woodley, well thrown by Woodley, I would exactly. think. Exactly. Woodley now 7 of 12 for 82 yards. Those aren't bad stats for a half against the Los Angeles Rams. And as we pointed out during our pregame report on NFL 80, David Woodley entered this game last in passing in the National Football League. A rating of 33. Nick Giaquinto in on second down at 15 now for Miami. They're at their own 43-yard line. Here's the blitz right up the middle. Woodley got away from it. More. On the run, he's got Nat Moore for the first down at the 40 of Los Angeles. Wow. Rod Perry made the stop, 17 yards on the completion, and he avoided the blitz of Carl Eckern. Eckern was...
was totally untouched. And I got to give David Woodley credit. A nifty play all the way around. He has done an excellent look at Ecker, and you can see him right there. He's breathing right down Woodley's throat. The kid's got speed, he's got agility, and enough presence to still look down the field. And this for the 13th quarterback taken in, in the 1980 draft, and the Miami Dolphins' the second eighth round draft choice. Would you run that up by me again, please? Well, let's say he had very little chance to make the ball club. 13th quarterback taken, that is incredible. Nathan didn't find a hole, took it outside, broke it to the 30 and a first down again. Tony Nathan did an excellent piece of running, no hole, where he originally was designed to go, took it outside for 13 yards, and Hacksaw Reynolds brought him down. But the Dolphins have another first down, and we're moving to the two-minute warning, and they lead it 14-7 to over the Los Angeles Rams here in Anaheim. And this crowd seems stunned. They have almost since the opening Miami series, Bob. Uh, Nathan has done an excellent job in his first start as a running back. They, he's caught it well, he's run it well, and the Dolphins are in control. Take away that one punt block for a touchdown. It's totally the Miami Dolphins. And so we won't get another playoff before the uh, coaches have a word or so with their respective captains. We have reached the two-minute warning. Miami leads the Los Angeles Rams 14-7. The Dolphins looking to pad their lead. I think this game is exciting. We've got some great excitement for you. Next Saturday, 4 o'clock Eastern Time, NBC Sports World. You'll see some of America's best in the first World Invitational track and field. That's from China. Then see the intensity of women's powerlifting and the best in bowling go pin for pin in the legends of bowling. All of it coming your way next Saturday on NBC Sports World. And be sure to watch it. 27-yard line is a line of scrimmage. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Boy, it would be something if the Dolphins could get the ball in the end zone here. Going at halftime, leading 21-7. to uh, Total offense to this point in the first half, astounding. Miami Dolphins, 220 yards. Los Angeles Rams, 100. What did you say the Rams did last week against New Orleans? 486, I think. 486, but it was against the New Orleans Saints, so maybe you should put an answer in press next to that. Well, those New Orleans Saints are giving Philadelphia all they can handle today. First down for Miami, leading 14-7. to David Woodley has been nothing shy of brilliant here in the first half. Chased a little bit. Now turns it back up. Look at him go. 25 to the 20. A first down and wisely out of bounds at the 15. David Woodley has been scintillating on the scramble today. 12 yards and Johnny Johnson ran him out. We got to get the stats on Woodley running the football today. He's got to be up around 40 or 50. That's 35 yards for Woodley. And the one thing about uh, Woodley scrambling is that there is no person in the defense to account for the quarterback scramble. Uh, apparently, the defensive ends of the Los Angeles Rams are losing their containment. Both Jack Youngblood and Fred Dreyer are allowing him to get outside. And when that happens, you're going to have 35 yards rushing for your quarterback. A shot of Rad, Ray Malavese on the sidelines. He celebrated his 50th birthday yesterday, and certainly it's not been a very nice birthday present for him thus far in the first half. Ooh, Larry Brooks. Whitley gave to Tony Nathan, I believe, and Brooks was there to say, how do you do? Actually, he was there to take the handoff. But, uh, he could have. Not a bad play. Well, what do you do now? You can't run it there. It's interesting, we haven't called Jack Youngblood's name once yet today, nor Fred Dreyer. That you right. young offensive line, for the most part, doing a decent job. So it's second down and 11, Nick Giaquinto in his first year out of Connecticut. You've got to be one of the oldest rookies in the National Football League at the age of 25. He's in. And the nickel defense by the Rams. Jeff Delaney is a fifth defensive back. That's where it happens, right in the pits, and Woodley on a give to Nathan. Nathan wants throw to throw it. Throws Look it back this. here to Woodley. He's in. saying oh my goodness but still we have an illegal touch by an ineligible receiver it was a forward pass the quarterback is ineligible that is correct Ten yards and lost it down. that's what i thought it's got to be a lateral if you throw it back to the quarterback now, i'm not sure he throws it at about the 21 or 22 oh, yard line he arched it didn't he and he catches it at the 20 that is an excellent call by the officials 
I swear to you, I ran that play first in Larry Fletter's backyard in Tremont, Illinois, 20 years ago. <laughs> and he stole it from me. <laughs> history, but Paul Brown took to turn the game around in his heyday, didn't he? He yes, did he some did. things to the game. Well, he is a student of Paul Brown, so why shouldn't he do things like that? The Dolphins have called a timeout here to talk it over. It'll be third down, and about, uh, well, they got a long way to go. We'll figure it out and be back here at Anaheim in a moment. Sam Dover and Bob Trumpy back at Anaheim, and the Brain Trust and the Miami Dolphins have talked it over. Don Shula, who's got the best winning percentage among the National Football League's 10 winningest coaches. This guy has won better than 71% of every game that he's ever been the head coach of over 17 years. And you know, Bob, he's only had one losing season back in 1976. The Dolphins were 6-8, and eight, and that is the only time he's been below 500. Well, the thing I've always liked about Don Shula is when he's got the horses, he lets them do it. And when he doesn't have the horses, then he takes over. And right now, he has taken over. There's no telling what they're going to run now. They may put the ball on the ground, let the guard pick it up, and run it in for a touchdown. This is the first time in 11 seasons that Shula has been in Miami that he has had five losses at this point in the year after nine games. It has been a uh, it has been a, a disappointing year to say the least, but he can still smile. Look at him smiling on the sidelines. He just tapped uh, number 75, Doug Butt, and betters on the shoulder pads. They're enjoying it. They lead here 14 to 7. They're having fun, is what it's all about. And they got a chance to pull off a great upset. The Dolphins have nothing to lose. They have won nine straight from NFC teams, and as I pointed out earlier, they are 27 and 5 against the NFC lifetime. That is the best record of any AFC team. Well, Sam, I'll tell you what this play will not be, a dive up the middle. I don't know what it will be, but I'll bet you it won't be a dive up the middle. It is third down at 21. We have a minute two to go in the second quarter. Miami leads Los Angeles 14 to 7. The Dolphins are at the Los Angeles 26-yard line. No middle linebacker. Watch out for the draw here, Rams. Only one setback. There it is. Tony Nathan to the 20, to the 15, and he crawls to the 11-yard line. Down again. Now let's give credit to David Woodley on that play. He saw that there was no middle linebacker. 15 yards on the carry. First no foul. Base mass Los Angeles. Ooh. First down and on about the six yard line. What happened was David Woodley saw no middle linebacker and called an audible to trap up the middle. And Nathan goes for 12 yards. Watch this. Do you see the official there? There's no one up the middle. That's Kuchenberg on the First block. No foul. Five yard face mask penalty. Number 55. mentioned too that the Los Angeles Rams as you noticed on that play very very poor tackling by Fanning so Carl Eckern is caught on the face mask and it'll be the six yard line with the first down and goal to go as Shula paces the sidelines he is he's he, conducting today he's not coaching he's conducting he is orchestrating, he's orchestrating and he's doing something for Woodley that he does he hasn't ever done for Greasy at least in recent memory and that's call his plays he really is involved in the football game more so than ever before Woodley Throws it out oh. here. Touchdown to Nat Moore. Beautiful move. And look at Shula. Beautiful move. Absolutely fantastic. Leroy Irvin, the rookie out of Kansas, had the coverage on Nat Moore, but it was a simple post pattern. And it's 20 to 7. The Miami Dolphins and Woodley and Shula together have had a field day today. Made famous first by Paul Warfield. Six yards on the completion. He's now 9 of 14, 106 yards and two touchdowns is the worst quarterback in the NFL going into this game. We didn't say he was the worst. We said he has the lowest rate. Excuse yes. me. You're yes. right. Here's Uva Von Schaumann's extra point attempt. And if they could get two points out of it, I bet Strock would raise up and throw the ball for it. <laughs> and the placement is perfect is the kick and it's 21 to 7. I'm not sure wow. we can see what Nat Moore does on this play, but he spins completely around right in front of you. Yes, you see him spin right around and Woodley puts it right on the money. Urban doesn't have a chance. 21-7 the Dolphins over the Rams. We've only got 52 seconds left in the half. 14 point lead for Don Shula and company. We'll be right back. And he gets good leg into it. Hill has to run it all the way down on the far side of the field at the 10 yard line. To the 20. 25 still going along the sidelines and out of bounds at about the 30. Drew Hill a 22 yard return. The 
Los Angeles Rams with 48 seconds. We'll try to move down the field and get something else on the board here as they trail the Miami Dolphins 21-7 to as we near the half, Bob. That's one of the things about Don Shula that I really like, too. You saw him uh, pat Doug Betters on the chest. He also just jumped right down the throat of Ronnie Lee for obviously losing containment against Preston Denard. That's what makes him a great coach. The players respect him. Wendell Tyler back in the uh, offensive set now for the L.A. Rams. He played the whole first quarter, ran fairly well with the ball, but came out after one quarter. Now uh, Ray Malavese has gone to him again. Paragamble, plenty of time. Throws it to Tyler, juggled it, dropped it at the 35. He got hit by Doug Bedoin, the former New England Patriot. And he coughed it up, so it's an incompleted pass, stopping the clock with 42 seconds to play in the half. And Tyler is rusty. He is a good receiver. And last year, uh, he... Uh, he had 32 catches, so that's not bad at all, but he is rusty. He is being brought back slow, we repeat. i tell you what, he dislocated hip. Excuse me, Bob. I'll tell you what uh, Tyler does not want from, and that is confidence. There's a great quote, quote after he got in the automobile accident. And he said, it's too bad that I got hurt. I might have gained 2,000 yards in 1980. <laughs> he also, the year Tony Dorsett won the Heisman Trophy, he expected to win it. He told everybody he was going to win it. Here's a throw to Cullen Bryant up around the 37-yard line. And he has his legs cut, cut from underneath him by Doug Bedoin. And in the hurry-up offense with 30 seconds to go, it is now third down and four for Vince Paragamo, who has not done a great deal here in the first half. And he's throwing for the first down to Bryant. 45 and out of bounds, and they stop the clock with 19 seconds to go. So Cullen Bryant and Vince Ferragamo hook up for the first down, and the Rams now trying to move at least into field goal range for Corral. They'll need a big one. And I know the question, why is it that the last two minutes of the half, everybody can throw the football almost at will? I'm tired of answering it. You just send in your answers to NBC Sports. We'll pick the best one and next week read it. <laughs> Willie Miller, number 82, Jeff Moore, 86, and Drew Hill, 87. Three outside receivers, and if memory serves me correctly, Willie Miller has not caught a pass today. And he's got six touchdown catches on the year. Frank Corral could get a chance, but uh, Paragombo's got to pick up about 30 yards here. Steps up in the pocket. He's got a man downfield, and it's almost intercepted. He overthrew the intended receiver, Jeff Moore. And it was Blackwood who had a great shot at the football, but it stops the clock with 14 seconds to play. Paragombo is now 9 of 17 for, 50, for a meager 58 yards in this first half. Get coming up at halftime, Bryant Gumbel, NFL 80 in New York, with scores and highlights of all the games that are final, and of course, we'll keep you abreast of the games that are still in progress, and there are a bundle of them. Going into this game, eight receivers of the Los Angeles Rams have caught passes for touchdowns. Billy Waddy's the only receiver so far in the first half who has caught a pass. That is, Chris Gumbel. That is an amazing stat. Here's Ferragamo, looking downfield. Dewey got to him, but he released the ball, and it's intercepted. Don Besselu, and out of bounds he goes, and Ferragamo has been intercepted, and the first half shows with six seconds to play. And the Blue Birds are up. Oh, are they ever. And maybe they have a right to be out. Drew Hill was the intended receiver. Ferragamo got pressure from A.J. Dewey, and he released the ball perhaps a little earlier than he wanted to. Well, he is coming off a game when he established a, a Ram passing mark with five touchdowns against the New Orleans Saints. And this kid works hard. But psychologically, you do have somewhat of a letdown. And I will tell you this, and you will see it. Besselu was wide open. Well, in his continuing, <laughs> Besselu, in his continuing contract negotiations uh, with Don Klosterman of the Rams, Ferragamo's stock has risen every week, I'm sure. But unless he does something in the second half, when he goes in to meet tomorrow morning, maybe Klosterman for the first time this year will have the upper hand. I think Mr. Ferragamo, if he doesn't have a great second half, will be unavailable for Welcome back again to Anaheim, California. Along with Bob Trumpy, this is Sam Nover. The temperature remains very nice. The humidity about 87%. The score is 21 to 7 Miami. And the statistics are one of the few things that change from week to week, Mr. Trumpy. Sam, you mentioned the temperature is about the same, but I imagine in the Los Angeles Rams locker room, someone was rather hot. Look at those offensive stats for the Rams. 93 total yards, 37 yards passing. That is incredible. The uh, Miami Rams... Miami Dolphins have been sacked no times. The Los Angeles Rams twice. So, time.
time of possession. Somewhat deceiving. The only score by the Los Angeles Rams. That block punt for a touchdown. Delvin Williams is averaging 34 yards a carry on two carries. One for 68, the other one for four. And Tony Nathan has done an excellent job. And David Woodley, we... I repeat, came into the ball game stating that he was the 28th ranked quarterback in the NFL, had thrown for just about a 48% completion percentage. Well, in the first half, he was 9 of 14, 105 yards, and two touchdowns. You know, Bob, we, we talked about the offensive line of the Miami Dolphins at the beginning of the broadcast as you look at Vince Ferragamo on the Los Angeles Rams sidelines. They are waiting for this uh, halftime activity to end. We set this game up in no small way talking about the Miami offensive line, and in due respect to them, the last couple of games they have gelled a little bit better. They have not allowed Woodley to be sacked. That, uh, I think, I don't have a stat on it today. I don't think he's been sacked at all, has That's, he? I just said that, Sam. He has not been sacked okay. today. And Ferragamo's this, been sacked twice. This is a Los Angeles Ram team that had 31 sacks entering the game. And so the offensive line is starting to get its act together. But more important, Woodley is starting to know what to do with the football. And on the downside, you just saw the other quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams. That's Pat Hayden. And I wonder if Ray Malavese now might be tempted to put Tad, Pat Hayden in. I think it would be a mistake. Uh, he really has not had a lot of playing time since he came off the injured reserve. He was out for the first four weeks of the season. He's still rusty. And I repeat, even though Ferragamo is cold, he is a quarterback who can get hot and can get hot very quickly. Well, this halftime show has gone a little bit long, I think, to say the least. The players are halfway out in the field, at least on the Miami side, and you don't see this very often. The National Football League usually has its halftime shows confined very nicely, but for some reason, uh, this this has gone a little bit long, and I think it has something to do about uh, the uh, hostages in Iran, and in a way, uh, an American tribute to those uh, 52 American hostages in Iran, and it certainly is uh, excusable, to say the least, to let this thing go long in their uh, in their tribute. They, they've spent over a year there. We can spend another two or three minutes waiting on them to finish. Oh, Lord, yes. David Woodley, the young man who certainly has uh, started to turn Miami's fortunes around in no small way here today. He hasn't had to throw the ball as much as it might seem. And he has done something today that he perhaps hasn't done in the past few games, and that is to throw the ball downfield. Yeah, Sam, let's let's mention it right now. As you look at the standings in the AFC East, I want to bring up the record of the Los Angeles Rams. Now, they are a gifted football team. They have a great many good football players. But do you realize that their victories have come over Green Bay, the New York Giants, San Francisco, St. Louis, San Francisco once again, and New Orleans. They are now playing their first AFC opponent today. Actually, their first AFC East opponent today. They still have to play New England, the New York Jets, and the Buffalo Bills. Now, Don Shula has had a tremendous amount of success against the NFC. But the Los Angeles Rams, in winning six games, really have not played anybody yet. They and Excuse me, Bob. And the only important game they really have played as regards their uh, their division race, they lost to Atlanta. Correct. Albeit a, a prayer pass by Barkowski late in the ball game. And the and the Atlanta Falcons won today in overtime, 33 to 27, I believe, over the St. Louis Cardinals. So the Rams must win today in order to stay on top, or at least tied, with the Atlanta Falcons in the NFC West. So we appreciate you bearing with us here on the a little elongated halftime program. It certainly was uh, for something that's uh, significant in the American way and that is a tribute to the hostages in Iran it is completed and we are about set to play football again and you're looking at Frank Corral who will kick deep he Tony, hopes. Tony yeah, he had a couple of punts early on that only traveled 30 yards but he'll try to get this one deep Nathan Besselou and Mick Giaquinto are deep on the far side it's Giaquinto to the 20 to the 25 and trying to spin to the 27 yard line and he's brought down there by Carl Ecker number 55 so the Miami Dolphins take the second half kickoff, return at 12 yards and go to work leading here by 14 points. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and it is intended for the private use of our audience, any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Rams and the National Football League is prohibited. Well, what does Woodley do for an encore? <laughs> I don't know, we're about to find out. And Steve Robisky, 38, or rather, Terry Robisky, 38, on his backs behind David Woodley on first down from the 
86. Play action again. Tight end screen. Number 86, Ronnie Lee. Still on his feet as he stumbles to the... Oh, and he breaks away. And the whistle blew and he still didn't go down. Ronnie Lee took a couple of hits along the way. 11 yards on the tight end screen. And as you talked about earlier, the Los Angeles Rams have made some mistakes in tackling, Bob, and it was evident there. But they look totally confused. I mean, there are people just wandering around out there. Look at Jack Reynolds. Good play fake by David Woodley. And there's nobody out there. Look at that. There is no one there to make the tackle. Not the cornerback. Finally, Jim Youngblood comes in from behind. And you don't want a weak safety. You don't want someone like Leroy Irvin tackling Ronnie Lee, who is 245 pounds. That's the linebacker's responsibility. So it's first down at the 38, and Nathan gets the call, trying to break through a little hole to the 42. Larry Brooks, number 90, hanging on for dear life. So it'll be a gain of about three on the carry, second down at seven. The Miami Dolphins just uh, totally confusing the Los Angeles Rams defense. They did so throughout the entire first half, and they are going again with a quick huddle. Nathan and Robisky remain the setbacks behind David Woodland. He's got time to throw the ball, and he arches one of the sidelines, and it's... No catch. No catch. Intended for Jimmy Cephalo in his third year out of Penn State. The poor kid has got two passes today. Both have been nullified by penalties, and this one was just a bit underthrown. Here's Cephalo once again, and he is replacing Duriel Harris, who is out with a, a apparently a, a torn hamstring, which is very, very dangerous. But a good pattern man, and he comes back for the football. I'm not so sure that this ball wasn't really thrown at Tony Nathan, who was five yards underneath him. But Cephalo coming back, trying to make the reception. Now third down and seven. Speaking of replacing, Leroy Irvin has replaced Rod Perry at that right cornerback spot to start the second half. Jeff Delaney makes it five deep backs now for the Rams on third down and six. Nat Moore in motion. Oh, Nat Moore. Over the middle. Threw it in behind him, and he made an excellent catch at the 50. And that's good enough for another Miami first down, and Moore refuses to go down. And look at the frustration. Get to the rookie Joe Rose and Jimmy Youngblood, the linebacker. Nine yards on the catch, and Nat Moore had to reach behind him to make it. Look at the smile on Woodley's face. Well, he's thrown it behind several receivers today, but they've certainly come up with a big catches. That was a delay. Moore coming in motion to this side of the field and goes back over the middle. No middle linebacker. And you'll see this is a tough catch, but Nat Moore's made a lot of them like that. And Sam, I noticed, too, at halftime I was walking out through the press box, Paul Warfield is here. Certainly a former great Miami Dolphin receiver. And NBC commentator. From the 49 of Los Angeles. First down again for the Dolphins, who just are moving the ball beautifully today. And the game is to Robisky. And he got cut by Leroy Irvin, number 47, as he picked up a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. Let's update you again on some of the other scores in progress. There is a shocker down the coast here in Southern California. Denver leads San Diego 10 to 6. Fred Steinford, a 38 yard field goal. Oakland continues to lead Cincinnati 21 to 10. That is up the coast here in California. Seattle leading Kansas City. It is now 17 to 10. Steve Fuller has just thrown a touchdown pass to Tony Reed. And Buffalo got a Roosevelt Leak score. One yard run, 24 to 10 over the Jets. And Philadelphia leads the Orleans 24-14. You are up to date. Second and seven. He wants it all. Throws it downfield for Nat Moore. And he reached high in the air. Went up for the ball with Pat Thomas, and neither of them came down with it. And Moore wants an interference goal. He will not get it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's probably telling it, well, you don't blame me for trying, right? I can lobby. Safety blitz by uh, the Los Angeles Rams. Johnny Johnson in there in Woodley's face, and he really couldn't put any steam on the football. That was the back judge, Roy Clymer. I don't think we've mentioned the entire crew. They've done an outstanding job today. Dick Jorgensen, the referee. John Keck, the umpire. Haggerty is the head linesman. Antec, the uh, line judge. Roy Clymer, the back judge. Uh, Royal Cathart, the side judge. Dick Dolak is the field judge. That's the whole crew, and they've done a great job. Third down at seven for Woodley. Pumps. Going to run with it. 40. Spins for the first down. Good second effort by David Woodley. Initial contact by Leroy Irvin. He spun off that tackle. Eight yards on the carry, and he's got another first down. And he certainly brings another exciting dimension to Miami Dolphin offense, doesn't he? Uh, that is now seven carries for Mr. Woodley. 42 yards, and that's six-yard average. And I'll tell you one thing. He can certainly run the football. He's got the guts to stand up there, too. Even in the days that Bob Greasy was doing everything you could ask of a quarterback, he didn't have near the mobility that David Woodley does. So they have a first down at the 38 and the Miami Dolphins have taken the second half kickoff and just thrown it down Los Angeles' throat. They did it in their first 
series in the first half. Delvin Williams looking for a block to the 35. Dragged down from behind by Jack Reynolds. And as we progress in this game even more, Bob, what you mentioned early in the game is more evident to me, and that is we are not calling Jack Youngblood's number and we're not calling Fred Dreyer's number. Uh, two of the best defensive ends there is in the game. I noticed that even Freddie Dreyer is out of the game right now. Reggie Doss is playing the other defensive end. There's Youngblood. He was spelled in, at the end of the first half by Ray Malavese. Doss came in for him for a while. He's an all-pro player, has been for years. The NFC Defensive Player of the Year, 1976. But this is four years later. And the Rams are fighting to remain in a tie for first Look place with Atlanta. Robisky, a big hole for a first down. Inside the 30 to about the 26. It depends on where they spot it. But Robisky, after an eight-yard scamper, will get the first down. And John Giesler, Bob Kuchenberg, Mark Dennard, Ed Newman, and Eric Loxo are doing the job for the Miami Dolphins today. That's their offensive front. And we set this game up as the Miami Dolphins inexperienced. Three of the players with very little experience. You see that score from the kingdom, but they have done a fine job all day long today against Los Angeles. They are well with in range for Uva Von Schaumann. First down and 10 at the 26 of L.A. The Dolphins 27 and 5 against the NFC. Woodley throws it short. Good move by Woodley. Breaks Look at the that. tackle to the 15. Looking for a block to the 10 and it's first down and goal to go Miami. And the Miami Dolphins are not giving up. I think there is a They said his knee was down. They're going to bring it back. But how many times have you seen teams come out in the second half with a lead like the Miami Dolphins doing? Be conservative. Not so with the Miami Dolphins. They're pulling out all the stops. Once again, uh, hate to put it right on the coaches, but it appears to me that Don Shula is out coaching Ray Malavese. Here's the play again. Delvin Williams spun around, touched. Knocked down by Thomas. His knee Good, call. Good call is right. The officials have had some, some tough ones to make today, and they've done it every time. Second down and six. The ball at the 22 of L.A. They fake the uh, pitch and get inside to Robisky. And he gets about a yard. Good defensive play by number 85, Jack Youngblood. Oh, we finally get to call his number. He was not fooled as they fake the wide pitch and gave to the inside man, Robisky. Well, you watch Robisky try to cut it back here, and he does appear to cut it too far back. You see, it's a fake pitch to Nathan, and he cuts back. Brooks misses the tackle, and Youngblood is standing right there to uh, knock Mr. Robisky back for about a yard and a half loss. Here's a pretty important play to L.A., third down and four at their 21-yard line. Whitley with one setback. It's Tony Nathan. Looks over the middle, and he's got a man at the 12-yard line. Tony Perfect. Nathan for the first down. They may spot it closer to the 14, but it's uh, Carl Eckert's coverage on Nathan. Seven yards on the completed pass, and they're picking them apart. And the best thing about that one was Tony Nathan knew exactly how far he had to go for the first down. He knew he had to get about seven yards. He went seven yards and two feet. Woodley throws it to him, and it's a first down, and Miami is driving. How difficult is it for a young quarterback like Woodley to, to, to uh, show this kind of discipline and patience, Bob? Well, after, off the way he's played the last few weeks, I think it's absolutely phenomenal the way he's playing. He's got it going. He's got a lot of self-confidence today. Williams behind a block by Kuchenberg to the 10, picking up about four yards. Jack Reynolds made the stop. The 11-year veteran out of Tennessee. And that's the first time we've been able to mention his name. Paxaw hasn't done much, uh, had much business up in the middle there today. Well, I guess out here in L.A. they call that a Reynolds wrap. No, they don't. They wouldn't dare. <laughs> they wouldn't dare say that. Second down. And neither would you, would no, you? No, no, of course not. From the 10 yard line, second down and six. Two setbacks for Bisky and Williams. 21 to 7, Miami. They are looking for more. Delvin Williams. Nothing doing. Nolan Cromwell plugged that one up very neatly, as did Reggie Doss and linebacker Reynolds. Mm, New Orleans has scored. At the Superdome, Archie Manning to Brooke Williams. Eight-yard touchdown pass. It is 24-21. Seven and a half minutes to go third quarter. And the Eagles have their hands full today. You probably heard the New York Giants beat Dallas 38-35, which is enough to ruin a lot of people's afternoon, isn't it? Who goes in Second, or rather third down of six now. And that more going in motion. He's had plenty of time today. Now he'll scramble a bit. 
Fakes the there pass, but a run for the end zone. Touchdown, David Woodley. How about that? Hasn't he been phenomenal? A 10-yard scamper by David Woodley. He has thrown two touchdown passes. He has run for two others. Watch this. Watch this. Don Shula. He sees him break outside. Little body English. All right. <laughs> Man is in the end zone. Had the football about nine minutes of this quarter. Nine minutes against the Los Angeles Rams. This is an offense that averaged 259 yards a game, had that in the first half. That man right there had quadruple bypass surgery about four years ago. Let's hope this game doesn't affect him uh, adversely anyway, physically. Here's Uva Von Shaman. Out of a Don Strock hold, attempt to make it 28 to 7. I, you know, there are times like this I wish I were in other ballparks around the National Football League to hear the reaction of the crowd when the score is announced. You want to hear something even more ridiculous? Woodley has 52 yards rushing. The Rams, 56. Briefly for station identification, this is the NBC Television Network. Here's Uva Von Shaman's kick. Sam Nover and Bob Trumpy in Anaheim. Drew Hill at his eight-yard line. The Rams got to get it going. And he gets back to about the 25, and it's snowed under right there. Number 43, Jeff Allen, was the man who made the tackle on Drew Hill. A 17-yard return. And I know you're sitting out there in disbelief, whether you're a Ram fan or a Dolphins fan. We talked about it at halftime. There was only one way we expected this game to go. We talked about it with the truck, Kenny Fouts, our director, Ken Edmondson, our producer, you, Trump, me, no. We've all talked about it, and we thought the Rams would come out with fire snorting from their nose. And it certainly, uh, the Dolphins quelled any. Look at that statistic. Would you believe it? <laughs> Woodley has almost outrushed the entire Ram team today. From the 25, Ferragamo was still the quarterback with Cullen Bryant and Wendell Tyler. And Ferragamo's got a man over the middle. A good catch by Preston Denard. And that is only the second catch by an outside receiver today by the L.A. Rams. 27 yards. Ralph Ortega made the tackle, but Denard gets him a first down in Miami territory. And there's also going to be 15 yards attack on the bottom for a late hit. I'm kind of surprised. Ferragamo in the first half was 9 of 19, now 10 of 20. And this will make it about 80 yards, but a fine, fine catch by Denard. No doubt about that. Excellent catch. And I do believe you'll see the late hit, too. When he goes to the ground, then right there. That's 54. Made the late hit. Now four take. So all of a sudden, the play becomes uh, 42 yards net. The Rams move from their own 25 to the Miami 33-yard line. And they have a first down at 10. They're going to have to strike and strike quickly. With 5.51 to go on a moving clock here in the third quarter. They can strike quickly, too, Sam. Yeah, they have averaged 48 points a game their last three here in Anaheim. Tyler for a couple. Stopped by Ralph Ortega, six-year veteran out of Florida who was acquired from the Atlanta Falcons. They've attended the University of Florida, so Ralph's obviously happy to be playing back in his home state. Gain of four, second down and six, and Ferragamo's got a light of fire underneath the L.A. Rams. Colin Bryant behind him, along with Wendell Tyler. Ferragamo floats one down the sidelines, and he overthrew his intended receiver. Billy Waddy was the intended receiver. Let's get an update on that San Diego-Denver game now. Here it is from Bryant Gumbel at NFL 80 in New York. Thank you, Sam. A little south of you in San Diego, Fred Steinford is up the Broncos' lead with a 42-yard field goal. The Bronx lead the Chargers 13-6. Let's go back to Anaheim. I don't believe what's happening around the league today. Sam, you mentioned that Paragamo's got a lot of fire on the Los Angeles Rams. Well, it's going to be difficult because the Miami Dolphins on that last drive consumed 8 minutes and 40 seconds, 15 plays, and 73 yards. There's not a lot of time left. Here's a handoff. Tyler trying to score away. He does. Takes another big hit and spins for more yards. Tyler, Len Blackwood is the man who finally knocked him down, but that'll be a Rams first down. There is a great football player out of UCLA, Wendell Tyler, coming off a dislocated hip, only the second game he's played this year.
this year, Bob. Six yards on that carry, and I'm sure if there's anything that makes the Los Angeles Rams happy, I suppose it is the performance of Wendell Tyler today. He's done an excellent job carrying the football. Now nine carries, 37 yards. He didn't start until the fifth game last year, and he ended up rushing for 1,100 yards and nine touchdowns. Waddy in motion. Ferragamo, late rush, knocked him around, spins away. He avoids another tackle. Looking in the end zone, he's got a man. button. Boy, that thing bounced off his shoulder pads and went five yards back up the field. But once again, I think Ferragamo was very, very lucky. He throws this in between two or three guys. There's Dewey. Been present all day in the Los Angeles Rams backfield. Den Herter can't make the tackle. Now watch as you see the ball thrown. The Miami Dolphins going across in front of this ball and see if it's tipped. No. Just bounced off his shoulder pads. And Wendell Tyler knows he should have had it. Oh, that's wonderful camera work, too. Followed him all the way. Great shot from behind Vince Ferragamo. Second down. Ferragamo steps up in the pocket. Lost one down in the end zone. Intercepted. No, they say out of bounds. And Ferragamo forced that one into double coverage. It was not a very wise selection by Vince Ferragamo at all. And underthrown. He was pressured once again. The Dolphins have been around him all day long. And it was A.J. Dewey again who made him rush. And Willie Miller on the pattern. You see Small on the coverage. A good move to the outside, but then Small comes up underneath. And you can see that the ball is underthrown. And you can also see he gets one foot down inbounds and didn't really have control of it. Good call by the officials. But now third down and ten. 4-19 to play in the third quarter. Third down and ten for Ferragamo. I would not believe the Rams would settle for anything less than a touchdown here. On this series is what I mean. The field goal is kind of meaningless down 28 It is now third and 15. That's the second time he has done that. Offense. Well, I guess when it goes bad, it goes bad all the way. Ray Malavese, Lionel Taylor, and the sunglasses behind him. Nobody wants to look the game directly in the face, do they, at this juncture? <laughs> Sam, I got a feel that the Los Angeles Rams just mentally were not ready for this football game for whatever reason. As you said, in the last three games, they have scored 51, 48, and 45 points. You get a tremendous feeling of security when your offense does that. And something like this happens. Just a matter of concentration. Third down and 15, three wide receivers, Denard, Miller, and Waddy. Ferragamo has a man over the middle, and it's incomplete. Yes. Flag down in the end zone. Good call. No, it's offensive interference. Oh, you're It's joking. going to be against Billy Waddy. I'm kind of surprised because Eddie Taylor did not have his eyes on the football. And normally in that situation, they will call it on the defense. Watch this. You'll see Taylor. Well, he, oh, I take it back. He, he was look looking around, for the yep. football. Absolutely. I take it back totally. Billy Waddy was the man guilty of interference. I'll tell you what that does. If Malavese had any thoughts at all about a field goal, it's out the window. Interference, number 80, offense, still third down. Great call. They take the penalty. Why would you take the penalty? That not explain that one to me. It'd be fourth down if you refuse the penalty. Takes him out of field goal range. Well, he isn't worried about a field goal, is he? Don Shula, trailing and leading 28 to 7. And you don't want to give him any points on the scoreboard when you got it going your way, Sam. This reminds me of Malavese's decision in Atlanta when he gave Atlanta one last shot at a touchdown, and Barkowski drilled it for the first touchdown in that game. 4-13 to play in the third quarter. Third down for Ferragamo. Why they took the penalty. Yeah, Shulman knew what he was doing. <laughs> Third sack for the Miami Dolphins today. AJ Dewey had one now. Doug Better on Doug Branch, probably their most consistent offensive li lineman at left offensive tackle. You can't blame Ferragamo for that. Now the question is. Pat Hayden, is that what you're thinking about? 28 to 7. I wonder if Malavese will turn to Pat Hayden and say, that's it. So on fourth down, Corral is in to punt. Tony Nathan in single safety back at his 10-yard line for the Miami Dolphins. And the Dolphins are expecting something funny. they got three guys rushing. On fourth and 37, I would doubt it. Corral, 
arches a high one, trying to hit the corner. And it goes out of bounds, and it just depends on where they walk it off. The official coming up the sideline stops at about the 14. Oh, he's still coming up. 17-yard line will be the line of scrimmage, and the Dolphins have it back again. Another 30-yard punt for Frank Correll. Good shot, though. He hit the uh, Los Angeles Rams mascot on the sideline. <laughs> Nothing's happened right. There he is. Well, I didn't want to get in the way <laughs> of that ram today. Oh, my. <laughs> we'll be right back. Bob Trumpy back in Anaheim. We're told that Rod Perry took a knock on the head in the first half, and uh, as a precautionary measure, the Rams are going to keep him out the entire second half. Leroy Irvin will go the rest of the way, and the question here is when the Rams get the ball back, will that gentleman uh, be in the lineup? What do you say, Bob? In the bullpen. He hasn't warmed up yet, though. Tony Nathan and Terry Rabisky remain the setbacks behind David Woodley, who is having some kind of day. He won't soon forget this. Straight ahead, Rabisky for a couple of yards. Once again, go to Bryant Gumbel at NFL 80 in New York for an update. Bryant? Thank you, Sam. Strange doings in the Kingdom in Seattle. Watch this one. Jim Zorn rolls left. The play started at the 8th. He's looking for Sam McCollum. Instead, he finds number 24, Gary Green. He tries to run it out from 7 yards deep. Loses the handle at about the 15. Of course, it winds up in the arms of Seattle. They're up by 10. Sam? Well, ours isn't nearly as weird, but it certainly is a shocker. The Miami Dolphins lead the Los Angeles Rams 28-7. Terry Robisky has just taken a short pass of 9 yards from the quarterback, David Woodley, and he has moved the sticks again. And the Dolphins, who possessed the ball so brilliantly in their first drive here in the third quarter, are at it again. They have a first down at their own 28-yard line. And I I'm sure that Don Shula would probably tell David Woodley to be very, very careful with the football here. Go with the high percentage stuff, leading 28-7. to I repeat, you don't want to give the Los Angeles Rams any momentum whatsoever. Steve Howell, number 36, is the up back, but the pitch goes to Delvin Williams, trying to get outside to the 30. And a flag is down as he goes out of bounds at the 32. Penalty marker is down. Pat Thomas ran him out. I was thinking one of the only things that have gone right here in Los Angeles holding is the indication against Miami. One of the only things that uh, has gone right in Los Angeles today, Bob, has been our great support crew, Art Hoffman, Chuck Panama, and Dennis Manishin, who have kept us in this football game in no small way. And the Los Angeles Ram Partisans of 69,000 have had precious little to cheer about, haven't they? And they're not used to it. Holding number 68 offense, still first down. And that would be Eric Loxo, the third-year veteran out of Tulane. And he hasn't done much wrong. The offensive line has played brilliantly for Miami today. They have simply neutralized the Los Angeles defense. Wow. And that upset continues down the coast here about uh, an hour and a half in San Diego. Denver leading the Chargers 13-6. to They have just shut off Danny Fouts today almost completely. Ralph Minershka, a couple of field goals, and that is it for San Diego. First and 20 after the 10-yard walk-off. Woodley to pass. Throws it to Cephalo, Ooh. and it was deflected, I believe, by number 20, Johnny Johnson, the number one draft choice out of Texas. We haven't talked much about him, Bob, but he was a catalyst for a lot of contractual problems here in L.A. that continue today. Signing for six years, a million one. And when the veterans heard about that, they went in in Moss to complain to Don Klosterman. They walked out before camp. And Los Angeles is tired of the story. I guess maybe the whole world is. But it continues in varying stages. Different players every week unhappy with their contract. Ferragamo, Brzezinski walked out this week, and they don't think they'll ever see him again. So there is unrest in L.A. Under two and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Miami leading Los Angeles 28-7. to Williams, or Nathan it is, to the 30. And falls across to the 31-yard line. Carl Ecker in 55 is on top. And on the bottom is number 76, Cody Jones. So it's third down at 17 for Miami. That young man got a start today. He's played very well, and what it's done, it's enabled Delvin Williams to play in spots, and he has played very well also. So maybe Shula has resolved his running back problem. Give Williams a rest. Stumbled on a solution. Yeah, he has. Williams' first carry today was for 64 yards. But it's Nathan in the lone setback position now on third down. Joe Woodley Rose. Airs it out to Joe Rose, and it's incomplete. 
<laughs> a little high for Rose, the coverage there by Johnny Johnson. And so it's fourth down, and George Roberts will have to punt. Double rotation zone by the Los Angeles Rams. And to try to get throw it to the spot where it's open, but uh, good recovery by Johnny Johnson. Here's Malavasi and Ferragamo. What's he telling? Get me 21 points in a hurry. If, if, he, if my head coach told me that, I'd give him the helmet. Mm, Denver has scored again. It is now 20-6. to six. The Denver Broncos leading San Diego. Dave Preston, a five-yard run, and Red Miller got his troops up for that game. It is obvious. That's going to throw the AFC West into shambles. Every division uh, still very competitive at this stage of the year. The Roy Irvin is a single safety. Sorry, Bobby. Uh, I was going to say the Rams appeared to be rushing the punter there. Irvin couldn't avoid the second tackler, brought it back to the 40-yard line, dropped there by number 43, Jeff Allen. A 45-yard punt and a five-yard return. So the Rams with Paragamo go to work in only a minute 23 to play in the third quarter. Minute 23 to play in the third quarter. The Rams have the ball at their own 40-yard line. They need three touchdowns to get back in the football game. As incredible as it seem, may seem to some people, it's 28-7 Miami at this point. And the score is truly indicative of the uh, dominance that Miami has shown. Denard and Waddy are the wide receivers, both split to the near side. Everybody out in the pattern. Paragamo oh, has all sorts of room. 45. And he fell shy. I think he probably elected to run much too late in the program. He picked up eight on the carry, but if he had left about three seconds earlier, Bob, he could have gotten about 20 on it. Sam, I was not watching the quarterback. I was watching the receivers on this side of the football field, and the tight end, the man in motion, and the flanker were all at the same spot at the same time. It appears to me that they, the Los Angeles Rams are not really thinking about this football game today for some reason. Well, Atlanta has already beaten St. Louis in overtime, so at this moment, the Atlanta Falcons are 7-3 in first place in the NFC West. If the Rams should go on to lose this one, and they're doing it now, there'll be a game out. Here's a screen to Cullen Bryant. Down the sidelines and out of bounds at the Miami 47. Again, let's quickly go back to Bryant Gumbel at NFL 80 in New York. He has another update for us in this big day of upsets in the National Football League. Bryant? Thank you, Sam Nover. Same update, only this time with sound. Dave Preston from five yards out taking it in. The Broncos lead the Chargers 20-6. to six. Sam? I don't believe it. I still don't believe it. Mike Gooman now in the backfield for Los Angeles. I guess you'd, you'd get used to doing a game every Sunday and hearing all the scores that Bryant gives us on the updates, and you think, my goodness gracious, it's just normal. The unpredictable is predictable, but some of these things are amazing. Well, that's why the football has points on both ends, so you never know where the ball's going to bounce. I wondered why. Ferragamo play action. He's got a first down, and he throws it. Caught by his tight end, Victor Hicks, and he goes down at the 37-yard line, and Hicks was well covered. A 10-yard completed pass. Had what looked to be great coverage on the tight end Victor Hicks. And it's been that way all day. Miami has played superb defense. And even when the Rams have gotten something offensively, the Dolphins have given it up begrudgingly. And the seconds tick away. We're about done with the third quarter. I don't think they'll get the playoff either. Ferragamo wants it here in the third quarter. He's already set. He throws an out pattern. It's caught. And out of bounds goes Billy Waddy. What's he doing? I don't know. He wanted a free play, I guess, in the third quarter. And he got it because the time has expired. And we have but 15 minutes of regulation time left. Now, wait a minute. Have they called this back or not? Nope. Time has expired. Three quarters are gone. The score, Miami 27, Los Angeles 7. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Nice to have you back with us in Anaheim, California. Sam Nover and Bob Trumpy. The Dolphins only six minutes and 30 seconds more than the Rams, but they certainly have dominated the football game. In the second half, 11.03 for the Miami Dolphins, 3.57 for the Rams. Well, that's where they took the uh, dominance away, didn't it? I think I said 27-7 the scores. We went away to that break. It's, of course, 28-7. Mike Gooman for some yards. Still on his feet. Finally brought down to the 22-yard line. Tackled by Ernest Brown, 55. But that was the most aggressive piece of running that we've seen by a Los Angeles Ram today. Nine yards. Well, Wendell Tyler had a good one earlier, too. Nine yards on Gooman's carry. It'll be uh, first down for the L.A. Rams as you look at Don Shula. And that's how they've done it today. David Woodley has had a hand in all four Miami touchdowns. He's thrown for two, and he's run for two. And if he's not NFL Player of the Week, I don't know who is. Paragamo has time. Now the chase is on. 
Dumps it off, and it's incomplete. Try to get it to Victor Hicks. He almost got thrown down back at the 35-yard line. A.J. Dewey had the pressure on Ferragamo. And I'm just wondering, Bob, you pointed out earlier that uh, three Ram receivers that ended up in the same zone, are they just wanted bad patterns? Or? Well, I think the Miami Dolphins uh, defensive actually doing a great job of covering him. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams receivers and also the pressure has been consistent all day long that uh, four-man rush that Miami puts on with moving Dewey up on the line of scrimmage and at times rushing Kim Bo Camper from the outside linebacker spot more times than not has really confused the Los Angeles Rams here it comes again Dewey on the bottom of your screen there now watch him rush the passer three wide receivers they hand it off to Gooman on the draw and an excellent play by number 75 Doug Betters who was not fooled he stayed at home looking for the run and he made the tackle on Gooman, so it's going to be third down and about 10. Betters now in his third year out of Nevada, Reno, at 6'7", 260. And he just chased A.J. Dewey out of a job, although Dewey was hurt in all due respect to A.J. Sam, you mentioned the scoring earlier in the ballgame. There's Buffalo over the New York Jets in Chase Stadium, 24 to 17. Worth commenting that a few people tuned in late, the only touchdown produced by the Los Angeles Rams was the block punt that was caught in the end zone, and that's the points they've scored. It does bear repeating. The offense has not generated a point today. Third down and 10 for Ferragamo. Has time. Throws it to Willie Miller. Intercepted oh. by Besselou. Gerald Small. Gerald Small, number 48. Well, it may have been a case of mistaken identity, but to the Miami Dolphins, it doesn't make any difference. Gerald Small picks it off, and he did a hell of a job to do it. You'll pardon my expression. It was a hell of a job. Second interception <laughs> by... Vince Ferragamo today. Once again, pressure. This ball should not have been thrown. Oh, what a great interception. I mean, Small was there underneath the receiver exactly as he should be. Miami takes over. So with a score 28-7 following the interception by Gerald Small, the Miami Dolphins have it at their own 20-yard line. Ferragamo took a little congratulatory, not a congratulatory pat, but a don't worry about it pat from Pat Hayden on the sidelines. Commiserating. I don't think that would help much to you. He's got to feel just terrible today. And Williams doing a spin around in the backfield. Still on his oh. feet. Breaks into the open field at the 30. Look at the tackle. Reaches the 32-yard line. Jack Youngblood is the man who made the stop. That's an interesting set, Bob, where he just spins around in the backfield. Sam, I want to tell you, I've mentioned this before. I didn't think the Los Angeles Rams, after that 12-yard gain by Delvin Williams, I didn't think the Los Angeles Rams were ready to play the football game today. One of the real uh, easy ways to tell is the tackling. Watch the tackling on this play. I leave it to your discretion. Does it appear to you that the Los Angeles Rams are playing tough football? Uh, Cromwell just rode him for three yards. Look at that. Just try to push him down. Uh, that That is a football team whose mind is somewhere else. So it's first down. Not only on the effort by Williams, but the ineffectual tackling by the Rams. And here's the throw, sideline pattern. Cephalo makes the catch up at the 35-yard line. Bob uh, Kearney, the PR director of the Miami Dolphins, has just informed me, and I think this is a very graphic statistic, Bob. Some are meaningless. With Gerald Small's interception, the 14th of his career, 10 of those interceptions have come inside the 10-yard line, which means when people are in the scoring area, Small comes up with big plays. And that's the most difficult part of the field to cover nowadays because you're only allowed that one chuck. Once they get in the end zone, you've got to run with them step for step. Rod Perry has returned to the lineup. We had not expected to see him again. He took a rap on the head in the first half. Leroy Irvin had been playing in the third quarter, but it's Perry now as Robisky searches for daylight and dives to the 39-yard line, where he'll come up a couple of yards shy of the first down. It'll be third down at about two. Seattle now finds their lead dwindling to 23-17. Steve Fuller passes to Henry Marshall 11 yards, and the Seattle lead is just six up the coast in the kingdom. And if they win that game, the Seattle Seahawks, it'll be their first win in the Kingdom in 1980. It will indeed. Miami rushing 207 so far today, 149 passing, 356 total yards. Last week they had 66 yards rushing. And they're doing it against the number four defense in the NFC. Fifth against the rush, fourth against the pass. The Los Angeles Rams, Delvin Williams trying to dive for the first down. May have gotten it. Red 
Reggie Doss, 71, is a man who made the stop. Philadelphia continues to lead New Orleans, 27-21. Tony Franklin, early in the fourth quarter, a 30-yard field goal. And so the Saints remain within a touchdown and an extra point at pulling off yet another big upset today. It's 27-21, the Eagles. Dallas has been beaten by the New York Giants. You can rest assured that Philadelphia already knows about that. Atlanta has come from behind to beat St. Louis. If the Rams go on to lose this game, they will fall again behind Atlanta in the NFC West. First down for Miami. The lone setback is Robisky. He is an interesting story. Terry Robisky played for the Oakland Raiders, was claimed as a free agent by the Miami Dolphins after they had cut him earlier in the year. And you know what Robisky was doing when the Dolphins gave him a telephone call? Trumpy, do you know what he was yes, doing? Do. do you? Yes. Digging a septic tank in Louisiana. And they said, put your shovel down and come on to Miami. It's got to be a better life. And he did, and he found a home. And Shula's Reclamation Project of the Year may be Terry Robisky. Look at him. He really into the game, isn't he? Second down, 11 from the 40. Woodley back to pass again. Now young play. Putting the heat on, and the pass is to Cephalo. Still waiting for a signal. I guess he stepped out of bounds. Pat Thomas had the coverage on him, an incompleted pass. Well, Cephalo's caught the ball four times. Only one of them have counted. Two penalties. This one out of bounds. Oh, right on the line. Good call by the official. And one they did count. You know, Sam, the Miami Dolphins have 22 first downs so far today. The Los Angeles Rams just 10. And worth repeating, even though it was against the New Orleans Saints last week, they had 468 yards. And we're close to that today. I'm glad you mentioned the first down statistic because coming into the game, Miami had 40 fewer first downs than their opponents. But they'll uh, eat up some of that deficit today. Here's a third and 11 now for David Woodley and only one setback. game, it'll be third down and 16. Hmm. Yeah, that interesting graphic, and they only had one first down, I believe, in the fourth quarter uh, last week against Oakland. Well, you knew it was a portent of things to come for the Miami Dolphins when they outscored the Rams in the first quarter 7-0. This is a team that had been outscored on the road in 1980 in the first quarter, 57-6. And they outscored the Rams 7-0, eclipsing their entire total for the year, and you knew it had to mean something. Nick Giaquinto in on third down and 16 now for Miami. Total blitz. And he hangs it up there for Cephalo, and Cephalo did an in-cut. And somehow Woodley was looking for him to streak down the sideline. It'll be fourth down, one of the very few things that David Woodley has done wrong today. Nolan Cromwell and Pat Thomas have the coverage on Cephalo. They don't seem to have missed Duriel Harris any today. So George Roberts on fourth down now will punt for Miami, and he'll be punting the number 47, Leroy Irvin. There is nobody back there. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There is nobody back for the Los Angeles Rams. Now, I knew they were... Uh, now, Irvin... No, they don't have 11 guys. Two, four, six, Irvin eight, is ten. still looking for something to happen here. They're obviously just going to let the punt roll dead. They can't be expecting Miami to uh, do anything but punt it. They're coming on the rush. They have 11 guys on the field. They sure did. And they all came on the rush, and the ball will roll dead at about the 28-yard line. So the Rams, forsaking the return, put 11 men on the line of scrimmage, tried to get to it. They did earlier in the game for their only touchdown. 36 yards on the punt by Roberts. We'll be right back. We were just talking about that AFC West. Uh, Seattle had a chance until that interception. Of course, they're still not dead, but that race is up for grabs. If Oakland holds their lead over Cincinnati and Denver continues to beat San Diego, the Oakland Raiders will be on top of the AFC West. 9.52 to go in regulation time. The Rams are down by 21 points, and Ferragamo trying to get a hunk back. Completes his pass upfield to Preston Denard, number 88. And a first down up around midfield. 22 yards on the completion. Gerald Small is the man who made the stop. And Ferragamo trying to hurry him along here. It is possible. Don't count the Rams out. This team is tremendously explosive. But Ferragamo's got to give somebody an indication that they can score today. They haven't as yet, the offense. 9.25 left in the fourth quarter, Sam. Justin, two wide receivers. Ferragamo over the middle. And off the hands of the intended receiver, who I believe was Victor Hicks at tight end. Glenn Blackwood had the coverage, but Hicks just couldn't come down with the football. And the 
clock stops on the incompletion, 9.14 to go. Ferragamo stats on the day will do something to uh, probably decrease his position as the number one passer in the NFL. And worth repeating, he had five touchdown passes last week against the New Orleans Saints. His best game as a pro. I hope we're not coming down too hard on him because he's got a brilliant future and he's obviously had a great year. This has just not been one of his days and to the credit of Bill Arnsparger and the Miami defense, they have found a way to stop him. Here's a handoff inside the Victor Hicks, a tight end Ooh. first. Hicks bounces off a couple of people. Much to the pleasure of the crowd here in Anaheim and gets the first down at the 32. Glenn Blackwood dropped him, but an 18-yard tight end reverse to Victor Hicks. Well, they've had very little to cheer about here in Anaheim Stadium, so Victor Hicks bounced off Larry Gordon. And number 46, Vesselu, watch, watch the way he gets through this tackle. He puts his head down and... <laughs> to score offensively for the first time today. They trail Miami 21 to 7. Paragamo throws it out in the flat and almost caught. And Small did another brilliant job of just waiting to Paragamo released it. They have defensed the Los Angeles Rams perfectly today. That ball was intended for Preston Denard and Gerald Small was right there. And Vince Ferragamo got his, has got to be wondering, is it me? Is it the Miami defense? Is it the Los Angeles Rams team total? What's happening today? I think it also bears repeating something I mentioned in the first half, Bob, that if you're impressed with the Miami secondary today, consider this point. Between the four of them, McNeil, Besselu, Blackwood, and Small, they have but seven years of experience. So Bill Arnsparger and Don Shula will have that group for a long, long time. Here's the second down to 10 for Ferragamo. Fires it in a good catch and then drops. No catch, no catch. Now they rule no catch. One of the officials came in to spot the point of the catch, but they said that Waddy didn't hold the ball long enough. And very little has gone right for the Los Angeles Rams today. There you see Waddy on the isolate. And he has been one of their most consistent receivers. Comes back for the football, as he should. But McNeil makes a good tackle. I don't know. I think that's a catch. I think that's a catch. You don't have to bring the ball in. That's Sandlot rules. You don't have to get possession of it. I think he had it to the ground, and then it was jarred loose by the ground. So that's a catch and a fumble, and he recovers his own fumble. Third down and 10 now for the Rams. They deploy both of their wide receivers to the right, 88. Denard and Billy Waddy is number 80. Slotted. Mike Gooman, play action. Ferragamo wants it all. He's got a man down. touchdown, but Sam, do you realize that it took him almost 52 minutes of this football game to score a touchdown? I do. 52 minutes, finally. Paragamo's got something to celebrate. A well-thrown pass, pressure once again in his face, and a good batter run by Hicks, but it's just a little too late. Oh, we'll get some excitement through an onside kick. All kinds of stuff happening in the next eight minutes of this football game. 20th touchdown pass of the year for Ferragamo. Corral will try to add on the 14th point of the day. That is the first touchdown catch of Victor Car Hicks's career. And flags are down. And it was just a beautifully thrown football. Number 78, offense. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, well, an extra get... point. Look at Hicks, 81. He's over Blackwood. That's a fine, fine catch. And I think a better throw by Ferragamo. He put it right where he had to. 72 yards, six plays. The Rams trying to get their extra point. 32 yards, the touchdown pass from Ferragamo to Hicks. So this extra point will be like a, a chip shot field goal now for Corral coming from the 15-yard line. It's up and good. So it's a 28-14 game. Can the Rams come back? 8-13 to play. Once again, a half rollout. Pressure on the outside. He puts it right on the money. Laces up on the right foot. And Hicks goes up to get the football. 52 minutes it took them for their first touchdown. But they finally got on the board. 
out on the mud of Shea Stadium. The Jets have moved into a tie with the Bills. Scott Durkin going in from two yards out. It's 24 all in the fourth. Let's go back to Anaheim and Sam Milford. Okay, Brian, I think we got one here, too. The Rams 28-14. They're down by two touchdowns, but certainly not out of it with just under uh, eight and a half minutes to play. Giaquinto breaks a couple of tackles to the 25, and almost impossible to bring down, it seems like, every Miami runner today. And Giaquinto is not the biggest man in football. 17 yards on the return. Giaquinto at 5'11", 204. You want to see an interesting spike? Watch this. You've seen a lot of them in, through the years. Victor Hicks. No, no, give it to me. Preston, don't spike it. Now, now do your thing. <laughs> My only comment to that is it appears that the Los Angeles Rams practice the spike more than they have anything else, and it's shown today. Ooh, ooh. Interesting comment. That was very well coordinated. Unfortunately, the offense hasn't followed suit. From the 30-yard line, Miami now must possess the football. David Woodley's stats don't look all that impressive, do they? But what it doesn't tell you is that he's thrown two touchdown passes and one for two more. He has had just an absolutely magnificent afternoon for the 13th quarterback drafted in 1980. Uh-oh, Rams got it. Uh-oh. I think they took it right out of his hands. Uh-oh. Gary Robisky, the ball carrier, and Jack Reynolds just stripped him of the football, and the Rams are alive. That may be the first turnover of the day for the Miami Dolphins. We'll see what the Rams do with it coming back. the recovery, but Mike Fanning deserves all the credit for having forced the fumble of Terry Robisky. He put his left hand right in, knocked the ball right out of Robisky's grasp. Reynolds was there to pick it up. Now let's see what the Rams do. They have a first down at the Miami 33-yard line. They trail 28-14. to Going for it all. Barragamo pumps. Throws it in the end zone. He's got a man! Intercepted by Miami or no? no. Out of bounds. Oh, 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 oh. oh was that close? Interception. The back judge or the side judge called it no interception. They're going to give the ball to Miami. Well, Besselu showing his teammates how he did it, and he did make a magnificent interception. It looked like they had the receiver free and clear in the end zone. Preston Denard, I believe, was the intended receiver. Where are the Rams? Where are the Rams coaches? Watch. Let's watch. Besselu up, makes the interception. The official's right there. One foot is down. No way. I don't think so. Not even can't, close. Wait a minute. We can't see his left foot, though. And the momentum, if it carries him out of the end zone, that is no interception. He must be knocked out of the end zone. So the Miami Dolphins come up with a big play and a wee bit of luck. After turning the ball over on the very first play, Vince Ferragamo throws the interception to Don Besselin. And now Tony Nathan carries it for about two yards. It'll be second down and eight. And the Dolphins trying to go back to work on the clock again. George Andrews is a man who made the stop. I'm surprised that the Rams coaches didn't uh, didn't protest to that call. They may have. I, my eyes were not down below here, Bob. They I, didn't move from the sideline. Okay. I guarantee you if they made that call on Don Shula, he'd have been out at the 20-yard line. Well, don't forget, uh, Malavese had quadruple bypass. He doesn't want it again. Oh, I About see. four years ago, and I'm sure he does. Ooh, Philadelphia now has moved out to a 13-point lead over New Orleans. Mike Hogan, a three-yard run. Five and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter of that game. Here, it's 28-14 Miami. A little pitch out to the tight end. Hardy in a first down for Miami. As he's knocked out of bounds up around the 33-yard line, Bruce Hardy's first catch of the day. And Carl Ecker knocked him out, but a completed pass for 10 yards. Now seven minutes left in the ball game, Sam. Miami needs to drive the ball down here, use about three minutes off the clock. Look at that Malavese. He's, he's complaining. He is complaining. I don't know what he's complaining about. I think it'd be appropriate to say that David Woodley has nickeled and dimed the Los Angeles Rams to death today. He's thrown for under 160 yards, but he has really had a marvelous time running the offense for Miami, and he certainly has been instrumental in all four of their scores. Here's Delvin Williams trying to get outside to the 40-45 and brought down another Miami first down. And he almost broke that one all the way like he did earlier today. 
17 on that carry. Great block by Bob Kuchenberg out in front of Delvin Williams, too. Student body right. Somewhat characteristic of the, the Miami Dolphins offense a few years ago with, what's his name? Larry Zonka. Watch this. Watch Bob Kuchenberg, number 67, lead up through the hole. Along with Terry Robisky, Ed Newman. Watch the block right there on Johnny Johnson. Takes his feet right out from underneath him. And it's 17 yards. Eight rushes, 106 yards, and 64 of those in the first carry he had on the day. Under six and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Miami has another first down. And Robisky head on. Hit there by the middle line of the outside linebacker, George Andrews, in the second year out of Nebraska, playing again today because of the absence of Bob Brzezinski, who walked out of camp on Wednesday of this week, and uh, many people think he may not come back. First touchdown of the day by the San Diego Chargers, Danny Fouts to John Jefferson, a three-yard pass. However, it came with only a minute 26 to play in the game. And the Chargers trailing Denver 2013. Sam, an interesting stat handed, handed us by Bob Kearney, the Miami PR man. That's Delvin Williams' first 100-yard game since November of 1978. Here he is again to the 45, 40, and he's on his way. One more man. Inside the 20, another first down. Jim Youngblood with a saving tackle. 31 yards by Delvin Williams. Well, obviously, Delvin Williams is a lot better running back coming off the bench. Nathan to start, Delvin Williams to come in in relief. Look at this, total domination. Again, Kuchenberg, Newman, Robisky, the same trio ahead of Delvin Williams, and they clear the area. He may have been buried prematurely. I think a lot of people thought that maybe Delvin Williams was finished. What is that average? Nine rushes for 136 yards? two different conferences or don't you care sure. at the 10 yard line again Johnny Johnson making the stop that statue just saw on the uh, TV for Delvin Williams that's his all time high for the Miami Dolphins Don Shula can be well pleased with whatever game plan he and Arns Parker devised today I it'll be a quick trip back to the east coast their second trip out here to the west coast in two weeks they traveled 12,000 miles to win they could have beaten Oakland last week if it were for something in the second half. They had five possessions, only one first down, and they lost to Oakland 16 to 10. Stumbling to the five-yard line is Delvin Williams. He's done it all in this series, and maybe Woodley's going to break the spell here. He's had a hand in all four of the touchdowns, and maybe he'll take himself out of this one. It's 28-14 with under four minutes to play, and it's safe to say that Woodley can ice it with a score here. Williams is averaging somewhere around 14 yards a carry this afternoon. That's not a bad running back. I'd give it to him more often. I don't know if you had a chance to make this point on the air, Bob, but I think you said it to me once when we were away for a break. This game was particularly important to Los Angeles, not only because Atlanta won, but because they've got New England next Sunday. It's the start of four games against AFC teams in five weeks. Delvin Williams squirting to the three-yard line. They have played exclusively in their own conference for the first nine games at the Los Angeles Rams. But in the next five weeks, they'll play four AFC opponents, and will uh, they obviously would like to do better than they're doing here against their first. Sam, four AF AFC East opponents, New England, the New York Jets, and Buffalo. Three of those, two of those are very, very tough opponents. And the Jets are giving Buffalo all they can handle today. At last report, that game was tied in the fourth quarter. Under three minutes to go, and Woodley has done the job on the clock. He and Delvin Williams are just a magnificent offensive line today. They have run the daylights out of the football. The handoff on the dive is to Robisky. And let's see, to about the two and a half. It'll be third down now. It's a goal-to-go situation for Miami. they got to get in the end zone, but if they don't here, I'm sure Shula will gladly take the three. Game is now final down the coast in San Diego. The Denver Broncos have pulled off another upset today. They have beaten the San Diego Chargers 20 to 13. Isn't that something? The San Diego Chargers won in Mile High Stadium for the first time in 10 years, and then Denver turns around and does it to them in San Diego. And they won big up there, too. Yes, they did. They won very big. And they won big in Cincinnati last week, but they came home and lost to Denver today. Third down and goal. Woodley wants to throw, and he's got a man. Delvin Williams was open too. That's rather reassuring. Well, we spoke very badly of that young man to start the football game out. Very badly. He had very little 
success. But the people in Miami have said, this guy is a keeper. This guy is a good football player. He has just really had his problems with the offensive line. But he certainly responded today. Five touchdowns by the uh, Miami Dolphins. Uh, Woodley runs for two and throws for three. To whom do we apologize? Maybe to David personally after the game. And all of his relatives. And the offensive line. And Don Shula. Here's the extra point by Von Schaumann. It's up and it is good. An 80-yard drive in 10 plays. Elapsed time, 5 minutes, 45 seconds, all following Don Besselu's second interception of the day. And would you believe that score? We don't. But it's real. Sam Nover and Bob Trumpy, we are in Anaheim, and that face tells it all, doesn't it? A unhappy Los Angeles Ram cheerleader, knowing that this one is out the window. It's 35-14 Rams, and Drew Hill at his seven. Reverse to the 15. The give now is to Irvin on the reverse, and he's out of bounds at the 30. They didn't fool anybody. I think Sully it was, number 37, who had the uh, ball on the reverse. The flag is down. And the Los Angeles Rams will go to work with about 2.01 to play. Sam, even though we set this football game up as the Miami Dolphins probably not having a chance to win, do you realize that the Dolphins have now won 10 in a row against NFC opponents and 12 of their last 13? I do realize that, and I don't know if anybody's prepared to talk okay. about it. Maybe there is something to this AFC-NFC stuff. I think entering today's game, AFC had won 19, NFC First none. Personal foul, clipping number 55 on the receiving team. First up. Well, I do think when you talk about this particular game, that the Miami Dolphins with their different kind of pass rush, using Dewey in the line of scrimmage, using Bo Camper as a blitzer, and also the... the the genius of Don Shula on offense and Bill Arnsbarger on defense has really confused the Los Angeles Rams for most of this football. That doesn't deal with the AFC-NFC thing. And uh, that's 28-5 is just too impressive a record to be accidental, Bob. And the Miami Dolphins, and I don't expect that you, have, you know, have to have the answer to it, but they're 28-5 against the NFC, and there's got to be a reason. I gave you my best shot. You handle that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we've reached the uh, two-minute warning, perhaps mercifully for the Los Angeles Rams, at least on this Sunday afternoon. I'm sure they will be back before uh, 16 games are played in the 1980 season, but they're going to lose this one today. Well, that area was described by our director, Ken Fouts, as the penalty box, and the front four of the L.A. Rams are in it. Yeah, I would imagine that Mr. Malavese is going to be very upset with the poor tackling of that defensive line, and also the linebackers and the defensive backs. I think we have to absolve Phil Murphy of some claim. He happened to be there, but he hasn't played all that much today. Ferragamo, good catch by Gooman, spins away down the sideline to about the 33-yard line. Mike Gooman, the rookie out of Penn State, a sixth-round draft choice, 12 yards on the completed pass, and the Dolphins will gladly give them that kind of yardage for the duration of this game, which is a minute 37 on a moving clock. 35 to 14. The Dolphins are 5 and 5 now. Here's a quick pitch to Waddy, and he bobbled it. Couldn't hold on. He got hit by Besselu and also Don McNeil, that rookie out of Alabama. You know, now in eight of their uh, 10 games this year, the Miami defense has held uh, its opponent to 17 points or less. And barring a Ram touchdown here, that uh, would be kept intact. That would be the eighth time in 10. <laughs> Matter of fact. <laughs> So it's second down, the clock stop with a minute 29 to go from the 33-yard line of the L.A. Rams. The New England Patriots are next, and it doesn't get any easier. Gooman, the screen, dropped the football. Mike Gooman dropped the ball. Well, they've dropped their share. Let's get some stats on Ferragamo if we can. Right, look at him. Don Shula still coaching. And... Make no mistake about it. The Los Angeles or Los Angeles Rams have been outplayed today, and they've been outcoached. The new Los Angeles Rams fans can address your letters to Bob Trumpy, care of NBC. No, 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 no. Wrong. I don't want any of that. <laughs> I can't imagine that they do not agree with no, I'm sure. They're obviously outplayed. It would take, uh, take a tool not to be able to recognize that. Is another thing. Paragamo over the middle. And the pass is caught by the tight end, Victor Hicks. And the Rams quickly stop the clock. Nope, continues to run. A minute 11. Tackle made by Ernest Rohn. 
And the clock continues to move, and the Rams trying to get something else on the board here. Ferragamo 16, now 17 out of 38 on the day for 185 yards, and Roan almost pulled off another interception, which would have been Miami's fourth of the afternoon. And that young man has not uh, not dirtied his uniform at all. Certainly no fault of his own, but uh, Ray Malavese has decided to go with Ferragamo all the way today. Aiden played with three plays last Sunday in the big win over New Orleans. On the third play, 17 out of 38 on the day for 185 yards. And Roan almost pulled off another interception, which would have been Miami's fourth of the afternoon. And that young man has not uh, not dirtied his uniform at all. Certainly no fault of his own, but uh, Ray Malavese has decided to go with Ferragamo all the way today. Hayden played with three plays last Sunday in the big win over New Orleans. On the third play, he had the ball batted out of his hands, taken by a New Orleans lineman who took it downfield for a touchdown. And the next time Los Angeles got the ball, Ferragamo was in the lineup. Will he be next week? Here are our finals, quickly catching you up. The Giants, yes, they did upset Dallas. Atlanta with a big win in overtime over St. Louis. We'll continue with them in just a moment. Second down and 10 for Ferragamo. Has a man wide open. He's got him at the 45. It's Mike Kuhlman in Miami territory. Let's continue to run the scores. Again, if you joined us late for any reason, there's the big blowout of the day. Minnesota over Detroit. The next team bills quarterback in that one, and the Rams uh, call a timeout to stop the clock. Green Bay won, another big upset. Denver over San Diego will continue. When we return to Anaheim, California, Lionel Taylor, Ray Malavese, along with Vince Ferragamo and Bob Lee. We'll be back in a moment. We would like to welcome those viewers that have just joined us. The Miami Dolphins and Los Angeles Rams football game still in progress with Miami leading Los Angeles 35-14. Disney's wonderful world will be seen immediately following the conclusion of this game, except over most mountain and Pacific time zone stations where it will be seen at its regular time. And we would also like to welcome those viewers in Tampa who are joining us today on WFLA-TV. The Rams have the football. It is first and ten at the Miami 45-yard line. The Dolphins have just had an outstanding, nay, an incredible performance from their rookie quarterback, David Woodley, today. He has thrown for three touchdowns and run for two others. This one is caught. Get out of bounds. At the 32-yard line, the running back, Mike Gooman, could not get out to stop the clock. He was dropped by Ernest Roan. Sam Nover and Bob Trumpy, we are in Anaheim, California, and that's all that remains of Don Shula's fifth victory of the year. And as I mentioned earlier to our other viewers in the broadcast, that man in 17 years as a head coach in the National Football League has had but one losing season. 1976, the Dolphins were 6-8. and eight. He was in jeopardy and, of course, still would be in 1980, but the way the Dolphins have played today, Bob, they're going to hurt a lot of people down the home stretch. Let's quickly go to Bryant Gumbel in New York at NFL 80 for an update. Bryant? Thank you very much, Vince Ferragamo. Back to pass, first down, throws it, intercepted. Ernest Roan has the ball, and down he goes to the 25-yard line. A flag is down back here at the 35, but Ernest Roan with yet another interception for the Miami Dolphins today, their fourth on the afternoon. The executive producer of NBC's football is Don Olmeyer, the coordinating producer, Ted Nathanson. The telecast of today's game has been produced by Kenneth Edmondson and directed by Ken Fox. Our technical director, Rick Lombardo, associate producer, Bill Peters, and our associate director, Ray Benassi. We have a 28 seconds to play, and the Miami Dolphins have the football again, and Don Shula will be able to run off one play, and it's all over for those two gentlemen. And if you talk to Don Shula after this football game, I don't think he can tell you of a game where he coached any better. He really orchestrated a victory. He really stole it from the Los Angeles Rams. I think they, the Rams started out very, very slow, feeling that uh, off their performance last week against the New Orleans Saints, they had no problem. Don Shula today wins his 10th in a row, 10th straight against NFC opponents. And he's still coaching with 28 seconds to go, leading 35 to 14. Maybe that's why he's winning. And he's found a quarterback, which may be the most important thing of all to come out of this game. His patience with David Woodley has finally paid off. Yeah, throw for three, run for two. <laughs> and Woodley just falls on the ball, and That's that it. will be it. I don't think the Rams can stop the clock. Why would they? Nope. <laughs> Very well put. 
So the clock now will uh, tick off the remaining seconds, and the Miami Dolphins will have their fifth victory of the year, and the Los Angeles Rams will find this defeat particularly hard to take because Atlanta came back from a 27-13 deficit in St. Louis to beat the Cardinals in overtime, 33-27. Now, and Shula waves at Ray Malavese, and that's just about all there is. The final score says it. Don't forget, immediately following these local messages, Disney's wonderful world, Old Yeller, will be joined in progress over most of these stations, except most Mountain and Pacific Time Zone stations, where it will be seen at its regular time. Good.